All right, let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Arian. Today we check out Fool's Gold Sands, the spin-off prequel and or sequel that apparently even the players aren't aware of to regular Fool's Gold, which uh, I'm a fan, I like it, it's fun, it's also irreverent and insane, and I can't wait to see what happens next, which may or may not ever be in this, because again, even the players at the time this is coming out, when they were playing it, weren't aware where it is. If they are now, I haven't seen enough of the show to find out, so let's find out together, because I'm very much excited to do this. Also, I'm definitely not late to start the stream because I was watching Space King by Flash Kids, but if I was, I would say that that was, um, that was a thing. Yeah, we're just gonna leave it at that. More importantly, where were we? Moving aside. Yeah, this is the part of a live stream I usually do out of the stream, but since it's live, meh. It's good enough. Gotta stretch a little. Coffee. I forgot I got decaf. I am very disappointed in myself. That's on me. More importantly, get to start up and not be disappointed in this because it's going to be fun. One second, just putting this aside. Aha! I can button. Buttons are awesome. Oh, I should probably pull it at the chat so I can see it. Right now I got it like so far off to the side I can't actually even read it. That would be bad. Ah, here we go. Nice. Let's get started. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fool's Gold Sands, the next installment in the wild, wild adventures of the Fool's Gold D&D campaigns. I'm going to be the Dungeon Plural? Master. I mean, I know this would be the second image. one, but does I was that mean there's more the than three? I Dungeon Master on Fool's Gold Into the Bellowing Wilds, and I'm joined by the lovely Dingo and Avery as my players, so... Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? I don't think I've ever Hi, heard Avery uh, talk Dingo. before. I play huh. a level two fighter called Rooster. I'm the creator of the... I'm going to take a wild guess. I know exactly who Rooster is. It's probably the big guy. YouTube channel, Dingo Doodles, uh, where I animate an episodic retelling of a campaign I played back in 2016 to 2018. I'm sorry, the Belling Wilds arc with Sibs, Gothi, Arena, all of that was two years in 2016 it started. Okay, I, I knew it already ended and it had been out a while. I didn't realize it had been out that long. It is... If she doesn't finish the series in the next two years, it will have been a decade from when she played that campaign. God damn. Uh, with these goobers, it's called what Fool's Gold. Done. If you like D&D with the silliness it comes with, along yeah. with some silly drawings, give it a watch. It's got wall magic. When I was back on Twitter, Avery had a lot of good art. Ducks. You can also find all me and my doodles on all social medias at Dingo Doodles. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's me. <laughs> Hi, my name is Avery. I am playing a level two cleric named Core. Uh, I have been working with the Fool's Gold team since the original Fool's Gold campaign. I played team? Gothi in that first run. Um, and ever since then, I've been working as one of the in-house artists on following Fool's Gold projects, including... You know what? I shouldn't be so surprised they're talking about this as a company, considering I am one of the people who paid money for their D&D &D book equivalent. I'm not sure if it's 5e compatible or its own thing, but yeah, I shouldn't be surprised. So... Yeah, officially, they are their own company now, and that's kind of actually really cool. Including the campaign module, the Soulbreaker video game, and other. Oh, I need to play that. I heard that was really good. Things. I mean, I heard that they made. I assume it was really good, but let's go. Dynabees, D Y N A B E E Z, where I post comics and other doodles. Oh, probably Canadian. And, uh, yeah. Or are they American? And I have no I'm idea. I'm going to be your DM, Felix, bringer of pain, dispenser of injustice. Yeah. Also known as the Consequence DM. <laughs> This campaign takes He's just flat out calling himself that. <laughs> oh my god. Place in the same universe as the original Fool's Gold. The universe, not world. I'm not going to reveal exactly where in the timeline. Which means he knows. In the world of course, DM knows. It's going to be a 2v1 campaign. Um the other players from Fool's Gold into the Bellowing Wilds are living in other areas. We're going to be playing D&D &D 3.5 instead of 5e because we same are as Fool's Gold standard, nerds, I think. But also we added a ton of homebrew rules to reduce that a little bit. So Ooh. this is the fun 3.5 point. So basically, it sounds like they basically played 3.5 but adapted it to play as easy as 5 
because it's easier for them to reduce it down to what they like as opposed to upgrading five into what they like. I mean, admittedly, I've never actually played a standard game of five myself. I was always doing some variation of, okay, we have these basic rules, and then here are the lists of the homebrew rules that we're importing and keeping canonic from all these other websites that do the exact same thing. So it's more like a standard edition that isn't really controlled by D&D in general. Have I ever technically even played five then because of that? I don't know. Although it's weird because the people I know who do the most of the homebrew take it from advanced D&D, which is... um. Yeah, the more you know about that, the more you realize those people are masochistic for trying to make that work. Point five. Anyways, we're going to be uploading these on YouTube, on the Dingo Doodles channel, as hmm. well as all the major podcasting websites, as well as our own website. I have no idea what podcast websites are. Slash like, sands. I think Spotify's We're going to be shooting for around an hour or so per episode. Hmm. It's going to be an actual play campaign, so this is going to be a long ride, so... Strap in Ooh. as we enter the world of I like the audio design sense. in the background. I have no idea where this music's from. Hopefully it's not copyright. That would suck. Really cool though. Hmm. Okay, so it's gonna be mostly variations in the art as the time as it plays. It's cool animation though. We begin Jessica? our next campaign. On a continent known as hmm, but it's on Spotify. the Parchlands. Oh, thanks, Leaf. Parchlands? Set in the same world of Ambria that the first Fool is called. So it is the same world, not just the same However, universe. However, at a different time, currently unknown to you. The Parchlands hmm. is a... So it is a different time. It is continent definitely it has not much to offer. the, the same. deserts are unique. The people are nice, mostly. They have lots they have of nice unique people. culture. The only thing it doesn't have to offer is moisture. It's a dry... Parched dry place however people still live there there's oases there's water sources and magic exists so they make it work Overall, yeah, magic does do a lot create if water unpopular we begin our adventure with you rooster you live rooster? in a oh. town called rooster Teak in the province of nobani which is also i just want to give them the credit there he said he's from tick not from the province of talk and if they had done that Considering when they started playing this, it had to probably be after 2018. I have no idea when TikTok came about, so they might have actually made that joke before it became more cringy. Huh. So called the Nobani Desert. It's your. Because Nobani wants to live there. Fairly familiar. Desert. Yeah, I get it. See something like in North America. Yoink. There's sand. There's rocks. There's cacti. But that's not actually a North American desert. The North American desert is actually more. Rocks and cacti, yeah, but that's only a small location of them. A lot of the North American desert, considering the size, is tundra in Alaska and Canada. Because it's the largest proportion of it. The ones in the lower states are more, well, Nevada. There is sand, but it's more desert outcropping as opposed to sand dunes, which is more of an African thing. Eh, it doesn't really matter. It's me just being pandemic. Overall, it's quite dry. There's some animal bones here and there bleached from the burning sun, which is um, always harsh. The nights are just as harsh as well when temperatures dip below freezing frequently. Mm -hmm. But that's a desert. as harsh as it is, it does have an uncanny beauty to it. There's large mountains that have been eroded away by the winds and the sands. That's actually happened, although not as common. In the is built into a little group of such mountains. People have carved their homes into the sides of some of these rocky cliff faces. Okay, what he's describing right now is actually a thing that does happen in some desert communities. One of the most famous, though, we don't know the actual name of, but we call it Petra over in Africa. And, or I guess more Middle East side. It's in the desert. It's in Africa. But it's actually this really cool city that was on a spring. And when the spring depleted, the city died. But there is so much cool carving in the hill. So it was defensible. It was cool. It was a trading hub. We know so much about what happened, but also so little at the same time. So everything he's describing, though, actually did happen in real life, which I find fascinating. Faces there. And it gives the whole town a bit of like a organic feel. Mm hmm But uh, there's also buildings made so they're from, from wood. Some fantasy from Petra. Stone, so it's... It's a nice place. It's doing what it does. It is doing what it does. It's charming. Yeah. yeah. It's charming. And Rooster... Dusty. <laughs> dusty? Oh, it's very dusty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought his you name was Dusty Wild for a second. I was like, what are you looking at here? Um, 
and Rooster, you've lived in the town of Teak for about a decade now. Though, How old is he? If I remember right, your he's character not from has a there? bit of a questionable feeling of time. He can't. Yeah, he has a terrible sense of time. <laughs> a character with a terrible sense of time. He thinks he lived somewhere for a decade, maybe. It's a good thing Dingo doesn't have a habit of playing characters with complicated backstories that are somewhat disturbing. Because that would be just leading into all kinds of questions. Exactly. And why don't you tell us a bit about Rooster? Who are we having the pleasure of being Ow. introduced to? Well, bit harder than I thought. Uh, so I'm going to be playing me. Rooster, who is a level two fighter. I think I've seen her play such a low level he in a while. He is, well, only a, a fighter, though. Genie, which is a completely oh, a homebrew race that we've kind Wait, of what? worked through. Which Wait. Oh, was Genasi a later edition? Because I thought they had them in fifth, so I don't actually remember when that change happened. I thought they were in previous to fifth edition as well. Hmm. Which we will get into in great depth. So not a Genasi, but specifically have yeah, yeah. Does that so give him access to the wish spell bright early? Gumball pink. <laughs> like his, his skin tone. Skin, yeah. His skin tone yeah. is bright, like bright gumball pink. He has the full genie getup, <laughs> as I legally am obligated to do. <laughs> That's why he looks uh, like that. Like he's going white harem pants, which are so comfy. And I actually respect the fact that she didn't just go full on. And I'm going to say something to intentionally hurt people. Disney's genie, you know, Will Smith. I know. I was doing that to be an ass, but at the same time, it hurt me just to say that. We know the real one's Robbed, Robert Williams, and it just... There's a better option. And he's got a little white vest genie, and some gold hmm. trimming on it. He also has, like, a soft red mohawk that kind of looks Can like a mohawk be soft? Like a rooster be a mohawk? thing. Oh, that's why it's called rooster because and it's a rooster mohawk. That makes sense. along with... He has really sharp gold teeth. Oh, I like, thought that was just like a thing in the art, but no. I thought it was just a reflection off the sand she was going for. Like a bear trap. Huh. Okay. Which we should specify for the rules lawyers. Rooster's gold teeth are not just like, you know, elemental, pure, soft gold. They have some magical properties to them. It's it magic gold. Half genie and all. So they half are genie, sharp magic and they gold are teeth. Tough. Yeah, they don't, they're not malleable, essentially. Yeah. They, they, they so he's got a permanent grill. As he has tried time. A mohawk and, time and a permanent. Yeah. Oh my! I don't uh, know. He does love chewing on things. He does. He's, He's he is like a fucking toddler. Yeah. Um, oh my god! They even blinked it out in the captions. He also has like a red scarf that he wears that's real tattered and falling apart. Uh, along oh, with everyone's talking about shoes. D and D nods with the chat. Yeah, I'm here for that. And he's got some cool goggles. How tall is he? Cracked. Oh, don't uh, have the goggles on the image. Well, Neat. I mean, it, is that necessary? Um. <clears throat> Did I stutter? <laughs> Wait, what okay, did he say? Is that How tall is he? Uh, How tall is he? Well, oh my god. I mean, it, is that necessary? Just pointing out that um, she's playing a shorty, huh? Did I stutter? <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. He and is, Felix is having uh, fun with this. 49, but he. 49, wow. Tall of course he does. Yeah. Of course he does. Yeah. Wow. Yep, I, I have uh, no idea what it'd be like to claim your nine. You're, you're maybe just a couple inches taller than you are. I, I definitely don't say that for someone who's definitely up to that height. Yes. Unironically, he's only like an inch shorter or two inches shorter than my wife. No, wait. My wife is actually 5'1". He's technically even claiming to be shorter than my wife. To give context, my wife is very small. Uh, for reference, normally when you do this, it shows if you're big boned or large boned or well, small boned. If you can't reach, big boned. If it reaches normally, that's normal. That That's how it should be. My wife does this. She overlaps an entire digit. She is tiny. And he's basically saying he is smaller than that. That's actually kind of funny to me. So, um, oh, I'm going to get in so much trouble for talking about that if she yeah, hears yeah, this. this She's in the other it room. It just like goes up a bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's got pointed ears. I'm in um, danger. And I think that's pretty much him. He's like a happy-go-lucky guy. I wonder if he'll do any special genie effects. <laughs> and parties a lot. And why don't you tell us about Rooster's favorite hobby? Oh. Partying? Uh, yeah, okay. Chewing so on things? his favorite hobby would be sand sailing. What? Oh, Which is sand like surfing. a sport that is essentially kind of like if you took surfing and put a sail on it and then, well, sailed in sand. That that. I mean, unironically, 
not quite as she's describing it, but this is a thing that exists in real life. It's where you basically get a parasail, not what she's doing here, which is more surf. Well, actually, there's a variation of it probably, but you basically get a parasail, put yourself on a board, usually a boogie board equivalent, just to not touch the sand directly, and you get pulled across by the wind because there's a lot of wind on the desert sometimes. It's also really fucking dangerous because falling into the sand is literally sandblasting yourself as opposed to water, which if you hit it fast enough, it's still water. You, you don't really pick up enough speed on certain things, but sand at a lower speed can still hurt a lot. Yeah. But what she's describing is crazy and fantastical and fantasy based, but also could be done with a variation in reality. Probably not as the image is showing, but not impossible either. That's it. It's, it's literally self-explanatory. You sail in sand. Boom. Yeah, you sail in sand. <laughs> Yeah, Every now and again, we'll it's uh, for where that's done. I think it's actually in the Sahara yeah, Desert. About. Some places <laughs> he near there. Give a shit. Yeah, exactly. it's not a cheap person sport. This is actually where we start our campaign because Brewster, on this fine day, it's a race. What? Ooh, am I racing? You are racing. We have the equivalent Ooh, of pod racing yes, starting uh, off with. It's not nice. A big, um, not like a big kind of like bracket match. This is just a one-off race, a fun little. I don't know what to call it. Just a match. A tryout. Be between this town and a few other local towns. It has a pot of 100 gold for the winner. Winner oh. takes all. I mean, this is Not his bad. Tuesday, so this is like, this is what he does. Yeah. He loves this shit. But people have been very excited for this race for a while. It's kind of on the outskirts of town. They have bleachers set up there. They have like an announcer booth there. It's, it's actually like one of this town's bigger events. It's, it's known for its Matthew Doherty said sand part of Last races. Crusade or Ian Jones was and filmed in Petra. I think that's how I found out about the first them. time. This Pretty is cool. not a major race. This is not like the finals or something, but hey, there's 100 gold on the table. So 100 gold is 100 gold. Free money. Deal. It doesn't matter. Rooster's having a blast no matter what. Damn he, right. I mean, he'll he'll sand sail by himself. <laughs> <laughs> He's Dude. having a good time with it. He is happy having to have a the good crowd. Time. Oh yeah, he loves I'm the going energy. into the song. Oh my yeah, god. He's such an extrovert with that. He's just sucking in all that energy of people shouting. Not his name, but <laughs> yeah, no, that, nobody's really... that Give me the giant rooster. Things you will never hear on this show because I'm sure that would never come up because Felix would never allow Dingo to play a character this giant. I'm assuming at this point it's contractual in their relationship. I'm just assuming that. And I'm not sure I'm wrong either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Though, um, as you do get yourself set up kind of near the starting line, you do hear some people chanting your name. Yeah. Oh, so he does get people saying rooster, yes! rooster. What a giant <laughs> rooster. Some. If there's a crowd of a thousand, let's say there's like a dozen people. There's a yeah. thousand people here? Damn. There might actually be a thousand people here. Wow. Small. It, it is. Hundred it is pot. Hundred gold. Thousand people. That. Nope. That's right. This is a big event. I mean, if they had a one silver buy-in, they're still making bank on this. Events for, for the area. I mean, the, you're in a desert. You just, there's only so many. Uh, <laughs> there's only so many times you can look at that rock. I just yeah, look at chat. Exactly. Oh yeah, exactly. The rooster is definitely like, with that 12 people, he he knows all those 12 people and he absolutely adores yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just like, I'm assuming he and tears up, goes googly eyes, waving. Line. Yeah. And uh, with you, there are nine other racers. For oh, it's in a big total. race, not just one-on-one. -on -one. And you've been busy setting up your sand sailor, getting her all ready, which I believe you told me has a name. Yes. Ooh. You can see carved in it is Jessica. 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 Is it spelled right? So it's Jessica, Jessica, Jessica? No, <laughs> no it's <is> not. <laughs> Jessica. Yeah, Rooster's not the best at spelling and reading, huh? No, no. <laughs> So they're pronouncing it Jessica, but it looks like a variation of Messica or Nestica. Something that the four claimer text would seem to spell their words as. It is the same world. Is he half genie, half four claimer? But yeah. Uh yeah, he I mean he they did experiment. This thing like, I, mean, I didn't think they meant it that way. His wife, so. Well, what does Rooster's uh, wife look like? I mean, it looks like a board with a sail on it. What color is it? Oh, oh! Now these are the hard fucking questions. <laughs> oh yeah, shit. what color is your um, wife's sail? Is it like a surfboard? Yeah, yeah, it would be like a surfboard. Uh, it's tattered, like it's got bite marks in it. It's <laughs> got metal like poles on it that. You know, this would be nearly so bad if it wasn't initially described as like his wife. You know, bite marks, metal poles, riding them. I don't even think they're trying to do the innuendo here, but dear God, are they succeeding? I am five years old. I have the humor of a five-year-old. I am well aware of this. 
Oh. Oh my. You know, look like they come from different things. <laughs> his whole sail is just torn, but has been patched up probably like twelve times. Only twelve. Uh, but mm. it's a lot of care. It Where's probably matches it? a lot of his favorite kind of colors, which is what he kind of wears. Rainbow. So Rooster's wife is a bit of patchwork. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. She's just a, uh, a fixer-upper. Yeah, she's a fixer-upper. She's I have to fix her. <laughs> That's the part they fix on. Other than his wife has bite marks. Yeah, yeah. Well, as you're you know sitting up your all right, sailor Marty. at the starting line, as are the other nine oh. racers, the other nine competitors. The crowd is getting excited. <laughs> They're serving up weird fantasy hot dogs and stuff in the stands. When you see how is it weirder than normal hot dogs? Coach you. One that is familiar to you. Ooh. He is. Do we a get the other character? Drow man. Mm -hmm. A little bit taller than you. Drow man? Oh, not the other character. Then. Well, he's five feet tall. I think drows are five, fairly tall. No, drows are actually smaller than the average elves. Oh, really? really? Yeah, because, yeah, they're actually shorter. I remember, like, we found that at a convention one time. There was, like, a. Uh, I actually a, like, wasn't a, aware of this. A height scale. Oh, like okay. and somebody carved in and drows are actually like five five or something mm. okay either way so this is one of those weird times where they're not talking to a dwarf or a no and they get to feel tall huh this he's guy's five like, five then this, like, this <laughs> guy's like five five sure and he's approaching you rooster and he's looking very excited uh, i'm taller than you yay him as marco your drow marco totally marco. not friends and rival even though this guy is rather nice to you all the time you seem to be Hating on him a yeah, little bit. Yeah, is the pleasant drow. I mean, if you need further proof, this is not connected to the Forgotten Realms. There it is, right there. My rival. Yeah, and he approaches you. It's like. Hey, Rooster, good to see ya. You ready to do another race, buddy? Oh my god, I'm getting Markiplier Bob vibes. <laughs> Rooster! Mar yeah! Oh Marco, can you not talk to me right now? I'm trying to focus <laughs> and also, um, Leave. you know, not talk to you. Thanks. I don't want to drown in my face. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I can, I can definitely, uh, yeah, I can stop talking to you soon, uh, pretty, pretty soon. Anyways, I just wanted to say, you know, good luck on the race and stuff. Like, I know, you know, usually don't, you know, usually you get like second place, but maybe this time you get that first place win. I totally believe in you, and just uh, not enough to beat you know, me. Good luck, buddy. Rooster looks very uncomfortable. <laughs> like, oh like my normally God. Rooster's like kind of a chill guy who does whatever. Um, and everybody. But a drow being friends, nice freaks him out. When Marco approaches, he's just like gets stiff and just starts like. Like turning to the side, like no, yeah, no, I'm getting like, Sundere vibes. <laughs> yeah, he just gives you like a hearty slap on the back. And nah. like... You know, I said Sundere vibes, and it goes stupid, Marco, which is almost the equivalent of saying idiot, Marco, and that would be flat out Baka if translated. So yeah, we are going full anime Sundere rival relationship here. I didn't think they would play into that one, but okay, sure, let's go with it. So it's like. All right, I'll see you on the racetrack, buddy. Yes. And he walks back to his oh sand sailor. Oh, my God. Marco always being so cool and awesome. Nice drow. <laughs> and the his short sand Genasi sailor is in equivalent. way better shape than yours. Like, it is... No bite marks? It's like prim and... Pro like, not prim properly. He didn't try to like bite his wife. It's manicured. It's painted properly. The sail is not tattered. Is it also Didn't stick holes in them? Rods everywhere? Oh. They probably all have names. They probably all have names. Yeah. Crap, I didn't think that far. Well... I would Marco name his sand sailor? It would probably be called Princess Holga. Holga. <laughs> All right, it's called Holga. 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 Holga the sand. Why? Racer. Marco's got a specific type. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently. Yeah. Oh my. And uh, yeah, Natsuki? definitely Rooster looks at it as being all pristine and perfect. He's just like stupid, awesome sand racer. It's so cool. Stupid and Holga. Oh. Yeah, stupid, stupid Marco. Marco's being all cool and yeah. like perfect. Yeah. <laughs> also before anyone asks yes i am vicariously getting my fix of not being able to play DD. &D. i'm not jealous at all no 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 one's not anything jesus cause way cooler well there's only so <laughs> much uh hating you can do because you're called to ready yourself the race is about to start Ooh, let's go are you ready to begin yeah yeah, yeah. all right perfect um, Stupid cool, as Marco. you guys assemble at the starting line and get ready in your starting positions uh the announcer hops on and says welcome everybody to this month's Sandra, <laughs> I need a name for this. 
uh, Santascular? Sandy Race Race. SSRR. Do you want me to give sure. it a try? Hang on, hang on. I got it. I got it. I got it. Right. Improvising on and the spot is hard. He gets ready and he's just like, welcome everybody to this month's Speedy Sandy Racy Race Race. Okay, sure. Fine. SSRRR. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's a sir for short. For this. Who named this? Like the mayor's kid? <laughs> He's special. Yeah, it's like one of those contests, but you know, like like teeny weeny snow machiney kind of thing. Oh, That's my. oh come on! If that was the case, this would be Sandy McSand face. We all know that would be the case. God. They named the race or Sandboat McSandy boat Let's face. Go. Itsy bitsy teeny weeny Sandy go go machiney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As y'all get the itsy right. bitsy go go machiney's ready, uh, the announcer continues <laughs> and says, "We have a grand prize today of a hundred gold for <sighs> the first place winner. Second and third get nothing because, because because they're." Yeah, he's got the spirit because they're losers. We hope you all have a nice, safe race. As usual, we don't want to see any fighting out there. Oh my God. Wink. He says like out loud into the microphone. He actually said wink out loud. The audience goes wild. Yeah, oh my God, they love it. See some blood. Make some bounce. Yeah. Today we have an especially. I just want to back up a second and admit that um, they just want to see some BL. Make some bond. Is how text is being interpreted here as opposed to what they're saying what they said yeah they're just going into it here it's um i think the term is this is a very different franchise compared to what they're actually saying further proof that the auto captions are very off and if there's an ai doing this it's trained on some very questionable material i mean that would definitely be a way to say it um yeah. That is a thing. Confirmation that the caption AI is trained on boys love manga. At least the uh, written portion of it. Oh no, I'd have to get audio examples. It was probably trained on actual flat out anti of it. Lovely. An especially uh, challenging course with a lot of twists and turns marked by the cacti along the sides. Uh, we hope everybody returns safely and, uh, you know, may may the best racer win. May God be on your side. Because I will not be. <laughs> the town mortician is just, he's just fucking ready and waiting. Outside oh, my, oh my God. He's like, I hope somebody dies. <laughs> yeah, Who needs absolutely. resurrection when he got coffins? Announcer's voice. You can see it in the crowd. Sand yeah, burial. Like someone's gonna be blood. Out there. He's yeah. got a stretcher waiting. <laughs> All right. And with that, uh, racers to your positions. And we are starting in... I wonder Three, if there's going to be high or low two, magic. One, I mean, and Bellin Wilds was high magic. And with that, a huge Reasonably high gust magic. of wind hits your sail from oh, behind, so magically they, created. By magically a created wind area. for it. And That's actually really cool. The races. Yes. So they actually have a race zone based on magically though. created wind. But let's so cool. take momentum for a second and change the scene to somewhere else. I oh, so it's basically someone from Doki Doki. With a oh. tall, hulking figure walking. Ooh. Core. Oh, we're switching characters. You've been traveling through this desert for the past couple weeks. Ooh. You have a terrible sense of Love correction. Love the audio. And That's really cool music in the background. have gotten lost because at this point you are quite thirsty, quite hungry. You're, you've run out of water. You're running really low on food. I'm assuming he's going to meet Rooster. So he's literally meeting a genie-ish in a desert when he's about to pass out from hunger. We are hitting so many tropes today, man. And before uh, I tell people why you are in the desert, why don't you tell us a bit about your character, Avery? Sure. Core uh, is a seven-foot demon. Oh, um, flat-out demon. From the abyss. He's what we've created as a bathos demon, is what he's called. Bathos? Bathos demon. Bathos. Bathos demon. Bathos? Like part. Baphomet? He has uh, pale blue skin, uh, white, long, like a white, long white mane. So the abyss is canonically connected to the Belling Wilds in this, and they get a demon playable character. That's actually interesting. Usually that is not what happens. You get like a half demon, a half genocide, a half genie flat out in this case. Half demon though. I mean, technically they're getting around to that, it seems like in regular D&D, so why not? And two large bull horns. And then he has he has a face that face is kind of always curled into a little bit of a disapproving snarl i would say this is default expression mm -hmm. he's got well, he's a, a demon, wide build uh currently concealed under a bit of a uh 
like a serape or a poncho. Oh, that's what a poncho? Um, oh, yeah, that's, I never that's knew what him. serape was. And he always carries with him his trusty, uh, we, well, I have it written down as a meteor glaive. His meteor weapon. glaive? I love um, the name. Meteor glaive. Sounds pretty like, cool. Such a cool glaive. weapon name. Sorry, this is being a bit of a geek out moment, though, but when they talk about meteor weapons or star metal, it's because some meteorites and iron deposits from that are, well, literally metal from the stars. If you see a falling star and you find a deposit where it didn't go too hard, you get iron deposits. The reason that it's really good iron, though, is because a lot of the times it's heavily refined by reentry, so it basically is a much more pure iron as opposed to what a lot of people at the time when they would find these would find because it's hard to refine iron to a level of almost absolute purity. Reentry through Earth sometimes could do that a lot. And if everything else burned up, a lot of the impurities would just be gone. So you have star metal or really highly purified iron. It's really freaking heavy, but really freaking cool, man. Uh, it, it's also how they identify asteroids and meteorites in space because they have different contents. Sorry, I could geek out about astronomy things for hours. So star weapons, meteor weapons are actually a thing that could work. Also because the really pure iron is incredibly durable and has some amazing properties that you don't really think are better than steel. But then if it wasn't for the weight, it would actually be better than steel. Yeah, it's kind of insane, the stuff you can do. Uh, what else do you need to know about them? Oh, we'll get to the rest. Okay. Because I'm going to tell people why you're here. Mm. Baphos demons are created by created. Abraith. For those who don't know, the uh, uh, Abraith is basically the god and lord of the abyss. Oh, so this version or has an a god. You have been uh, created and sent up here by Abraith himself. You've been put through a uh, very speedy training regimen to get you up to speed. Hence why you're only level two and not some super strong, powerful demon right now. A level two demon. Huh. And you've been tasked to come to the Doink. surface to find the capital city of this province of Nobani for and meet with an informant to oh. get more information about your very secret, very important quest. And it so he's being sent on a mission to get his mission. That is so many levels of effed up. You think some kind of crazy demon plotted it out. Oh, yeah. You by the demon oh, lord Abraith himself. Super important. Oh yeah, start my dagger. You're now in the you? desert and dying oh, and failing, failing horribly at this attempt. <laughs> no, I'm oh, not. No. I'm doing great at this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just as planned. Yeah. Despite you being a cleric of Abraith and having some icy powers that can help you not die of heat exhaustion Ice in the powers? desert. Oh. You still need to sense. eat and drink, and you're lacking one of those things right now. So I'm assuming the ice powers are just making ice out of water around him as opposed to just making ice out of nothing. Yeah, that's a lot less powerful there. Otherwise, the water would be taken care of. He just makes ice and then drinks it. Would that be like drinking your own magic? Oh, that'd be weird. But those thoughts of worry and failure and thirst are interrupted by the sight of something at the horizon. And when you look closer, I mean, it's it's a little hard to Did see because see the, the heat bouncing off the sands is making the air a little wavy and maybe you're going a little crazy, but that Probably looks little. like a shark fin circling around and then coming towards you. Wait, circling? Okay. It's probably is the race course. you'd like to do? Because it looks like this shark is coming straight for you. It's probably <laughs> not a shark. Of course he's coming, and he throws one side of his therapy aside, grips his meteor glaive, and goes, fucking, finally, <laughs> I am starving! Come this is not going to be a sand shark. Please bitch. let it actually just be a rooster. <laughs> oh, this is going to be perfect. Okay. Oh! So, um, Did Avery not figure... Oh, no, she's in... Charges at she you. She is playing character, yeah. spot check. Oh, boy, the first roll of the session. First, first roll, roll of the session. session. It took them 20 minutes to get the first roll. I guess I just play with a lot of dice happy. Okay, never mind. I know I play with a lot of dice happy idiots. I'm one of them. Because we're rolling every second we can get. We invent rolls we didn't even need to because it's funny. And because I fail in such unique ways that it actually makes things go way worse. And I hope it's a nat uh, well, the campaign. Not 20. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's a nat 20. Um, the okay, fuck? Nat 20. So, <laughs> wow. There's a really weird inverse here that this campaign starts on a nat 20 where objectively 
Fool's Gold Belling Wilds, at least as far as the video portions went, started with Sips getting a not one, effectively, on releasing a Trask. <sighs> Talk about a tonal difference already. This campaign's off to a great start. It's it is definitely a nice start. <laughs> Min-maxed campaign. Yeah, yeah. Extreme go. As you're ready to attack and the shark is coming at you, thanks to your amazing spot check, somehow, you can actually determine that this is not a shark at all, Aww. but it's a sail. Oh, Aww, I thought that'd be funny <laughs> if they actually got there. <laughs> Give me a reflex. Oh, that's Still not attacking it? For him. He's not going to be good at that. Oh, he did okay. That's a 17, actually. What do they 17, need? 17. Yeah. Not bad. Uh, but... You can avoid getting absolutely broadsided by... Rooster Sand Sailor. <laughs> However, he still makes contact and slams into you, but you take no damage. And you're now on top of the surfboard with him. He oh, literally yeah. just got run over by a sand rooster. And rooster, of course, you've just witnessed this. You're in the race. Actually, you were in first place. You were doing I mean, you just gotta hate it when a rooster just shoves right into you, man. It's just a giant pile of rooster that just comes in right up there it's like no one asked for that rooster right in their face and then it's like you just get dragged behind that giant rooster you know there's going to be a lot of innuendo on this one and i'm not going to regret anything this is stupid i love every second of it very well <sighs> when you made contact with the seven foot tall old. pale blue demon guy stumbling around oh, in the desert okay i like to think okay so rooster would have seen this big fucking guy in front of him but i like to think that he was turning back, going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take me out He so. wasn't looking while driving. <laughs> Stupid Marco. Yeah, Marco. He's just like, yeah, yeah. And then he just gets clocked by you. Oh, my yeah, God. You hear, the, you hear this bellowing roar of a hungry demon. Turn around. <laughs> yeah. And now like, Cor is just, like, clinging on to your sands. You're like, you're not food. <laughs> Bruce, and he's I'm disappointed. To immediately make a ride check. Ride check? Oh, ride? Near right. the bottom. Oh, it's probably oh, one. Three point five had a lot like, of options. That's I why. Even have Ryan? Is, <laughs> I hope so. Oh no! <laughs> did you get a nat? I did. You got the nat I one. Nat one. Oh no! Okay. So not only are we starting, you know, I thought it was weird that we were starting off one, but I realized this is never mind completely accurate to the standard we've seen in fellow or the fool's gold bellowing wiles. Avery does great in her roles. And Dingo just whiffs. We got a nat 20 and a nat 1. You get on the boat without damage. And the boat driver immediately fucks all that shit up. <laughs> Good oh, start for the Oh my fight. god, I so, love this. Like, with amazing dexterity, Kor has basically just, like, jumped onto your sailor, held on. You guys have maintained balance. And then, Rooster, it's your turn to contribute. And you're just, <laughs> you're just so messed up by everything happening. What the why is there a demon on me? The sand sailor, you crash. Oh no! Just like tumble. You tumble, yeah. How yeah. bad? But core, you too. Like you don't take any. Does it damage? Does, Jessica, no! does his wife take damage? <laughs> I'll, I'll specify. Ah! Jessica's not broken. Oh, oh thank that's God. That's good. Jessica's not broken. You just wiped it. The only thing. He the rooster didn't break his God, wife. Jessica's hearty. Yeah. Because like, God, how how heavy would core even be? He's seven, seven, he's seven foot of pure muscle. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty heavy. Yeah, I don't know. Probably but like for uh, surprising reasons, Rooster matches your weight. Oh, that's what? true. That's... <laughs> How is this ship even I'm moving? Magic. To, for, for people listening in, yeah. right. Rooster is as heavy, if not heavier, than you. Yeah, so mm -hmm. as he like, tumbles and biffs it on the ground, you just see like, like the dirt dense. really yeah. fucked over this. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're both lying face down in the sand. Rooster behind you, you can hear Marco going like, <laughs> Who's gonna swing first? I hope you're okay. As he like, passes. Oh my god, he's even being Marco! cute here. Oh, the nice drow. Stop it, As nice. Uh, I definitely like, get up. I'm all like, dusty. Oh. I'm probably just like, dust head to toe. Like, Absolutely. Ugh. Yeah, you can yeah. Shakes like message. a dog. Core slowly gets up and snorts angrily. I will <laughs> specify not all racers have passed you. You're not out of the race. Oh! oh I'm still in the race, holy crap! Uh, so Marco is really damn good to keep up then. Ah, Never mind. He, like, he's gonna try to move Jessica. Three out of ten, right? Okay. Or twelve? Sure, you, you can do that. You don't need a ride check. You've done that plenty of times. Yeah, I like get up and go. It's just that like... That one. That one. That so one! I can get to you, dude! Ah, I gotta go! <laughs> <laughs> and Cor, what are you doing in all this? So now Rooster is like scrambling. He's getting up. He's starting Give to like meat. fix the sail, get it all ready again. 
Well, I mean, unless there's... Unless there's something of core that he left behind on that sand sailor, he is not interested in participating in this any longer. Oh, then let me just see what, if anything. He's just like, you're not food. You're not a shark that yeah. I can fight. I mean, he has shark teeth. <laughs> Golden teeth. Okay, so literally as Roost... <laughs> I rolled a 96. So. Okay. Out of what? Literally, as Rooster is like starting to push off and gain movement. What was he rolling? Your amulet of Abrath is stuck on the sand sailor. Oh, uh, hey, hey. Kind of need that probably. He's going, he's going, he's going, Pink child. Going. Wait. Pink child. Pink child. Stop. <laughs> core, do a reflex. He's bad at these. 11? 11? Out of. You know what? That's good enough. You yeah. actually catch up and are able to jump on. Okay. Sand sailor. Damn. Can I Against that. <laughs> <laughs> hey. He's got a long stride. I know, but it's more like you're weighing him down. <laughs> True. Get off my sailor! I've got to go catch up. Uh, oh, that's what I meant by fast balance? friendship. Is they're moving at speed. Well, what would you like to do against him? Are you trying to shake him off? Are you trying to fight Maneuver. him? Maneuver. Maneuver. That's the right. Like, Core's trying to like. Core has one arm on the sand sailor, and I think maybe he's trying yeah. to like, do the jump onto it. Mm -hmm. Like you know, and Rooster's trying to sixteen. Juke him. Oh my god. 16? Okay. Um, I'll oppose it. So. Core, give me a. Let me see here. Maybe it's just a strength roll to just like keep it in place. Yeah, grapple. I did a grapple check. Okay. Not twenty. Oh, oh my god. God damn. You try to me down. Try to give me. Actually, he just lifts it up out of the sand. He's like, give me that. <laughs> no, quite the opposite. So Rooster's trying to leave and shake you off. Uh -huh. You're trying to get like grab your amulet back. Uh, and in fact, Rooster, you see with Core's amazing strength, he has. Pushed into the sand sailor, and you go. You're going even faster than before. Ooh. What? Okay, you can stay on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's he go. He pushed you know into it. Huh? What? That. He points at like the amulet that is tied around the mast of the. How is he? Yeah. Wait, is he running okay. fast enough on sand uh, to push yeah, it faster than the actual race? I guess was that you guys are participating in the race now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it became a team sport. I'll give you back your amulet if you just stay on for a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So let's do this. Or is it because um, his weight is holding him down, so they get more? Give me a ride check. Okay. Hit to you win. Oh. I have no idea how that works. A Magic. <laughs> a seven. Yeah, not great. That's no, okay. not good. A three. <laughs> Rooster, um, you I'm tripped up by all of this. You tripped up. I thought they rolled a flat natural seven. No, apparently seven was after the modifiers. Dingo has a lot there. Plus five at level two is nothing to shake your nose at. Also, taking your nose off to shake would be a little weird, but um. That! That's not my level of rolling in Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, I had to restart the game because I kept getting natural ones on every character. It got to the point where I decided to go into easy mode and it didn't change. So I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'll just play again later with cheat code so I cannot get lower than a 5. I'm not saying I'm, I'm salty. I'm just saying that if I can abuse it in a game, I will because I can't in actual D&D. Even though it goes literally the same. I thought it was the dice. No, apparently it's just odds in general don't seem to phase for me. That's why I don't go to Vegas. Up by all also, this, I'm cheap. That, that too. two more racers pass you. So you are now in, I think, in fifth place? Sixth place. Hmm. Use your foot! Push off the back! Nobody knows what the fuck is going on, but I am going to address that you and I have music playing on our ears just for the atmosphere, and you've put on Ooh. fucking initial D. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude! I have deja vu in my head right now, having just said that. Oh, that is. Damn, Felix, you pulled out the good songs for a race scene. Hell yeah. The music that we're listening to. We are racing now. <laughs> what am I rolling again? Deja vu. Um, you know what? Just <laughs> give this me. Place before. Give me a strength check because <laughs> you're pushing. Push, push. Okay, I got a 10. <laughs> 10? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you know, well, I am you're so not jealous. Really contributing. You're not slowing it down. You're not slowing it. Like, it's the same speed. Okay, we can do this. I believe in us. Yeah. I don't. I've seen your matters. rolls. Oh, okay. Uh, one guy actually, uh, I rolled a three, so. Hey. He wiped out. Wait, a three. And Rooster. They rolled lower than Rooster. Fourth place again. Okay. Hey. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to turn to, to core mm -hmm. and I'm going to go, you. Help me cheat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take this. And he just like brings out a bag. What? And it's got marbles and nails and random pieces of metal. <gasps> oh my god, he's actually cheating! He's chugging at the other guys! He's actually cheating! Okay. <laughs> I don't think this is how racing is supposed to go. Give me a ranged attack roll. Full oh, 10. Uh, bring you to We're a 10. We're doing full okay, pod well. racing, man. But not a 10. Not, not the best. Oh. Not the best. He's just fucking I mean, he flying is a fighter. through this fucking desert. <laughs> His core is just like, oh! Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. No, you've you've thrown it, but you're still a bit so thrown off balance by all that is happening. Uh, you do hit their board, but it just doesn't do anything. So. Something must like. <laughs> so he's cheating, but he's bad at cheating. When he do it. Also. Rise Rose, or sorry, Rising Rose, first time in the stream? Nice! And you wanted to catch the last one, but you're not that part of Honkai yet? Yeah, no, I completely understand, but thank you for dropping in! Uh, this one's all D&D, but it's a brand new adventure from Dingo, and honestly, this is freaking awesome. And yeah, Marley, they're doing Mario Kart rules. All they need to do is find the one that is, uh, what is it, the blue shell? And then they automatically probably take out Marco, which is the more important part here. Hit that sand, dude. <laughs> well, you're this. also still dying of thirst right now. Yeah, he's probably just you're he looks at you and he's like, "Hey, oh, one more." How much of this does he think he's hallucinating? Nearby. Yeah, there's a town. Good, we're going to there after this. Uh, I was gonna do it anyway. The Great. Race will actually take you there. So. Cool, excellent. Uh, next up, it's the. Race if only it was actually cool because he's burning up probably. Check to see where you end up in your placement. Ooh, that's even lower. That's a six. Oh you my god, Dingo! Place. Damn it! As others go ahead and pass you. Um, Could you explain what actually is going on here? Why are we racing? Who are these other people? Uh, I don't know them Racers? all individually, but we're racing for glory and some cash and fun. I think this is really fun. <laughs> I do like <laughs> the glory. The is just the best cash. part. <laughs> uh, and with a 17 core, you get hit with a snake someone has thrown at you. Okay, <laughs> everyone cheats. <laughs> It's just part of this. And the snake Random is just, like, snake. It's, it's freaking out. Like, <laughs> of course freaking out. Ah! <laughs> the snake is the one freaking out. Um, I had one more day to snake it. retirement. We can name it. <laughs> the snake is going to try to bite you. Does an 11 hit you? Uh, no. Okay, so oh. it does not manage to pierce your skin. With that, we are to... Um, core, it's your turn. Okay. Um, you, you have a snake on you. <laughs> you have a snake on you. You still have a snake. He's panicking. Glare at oh, the you, snake. You're like... Hearty laughter from behind. Okay, can I see? Can I tell who threw it at me? Yeah, you can tell who threw Throw it at me. Throw the you. Like snake! Six threw it at okay. you. He's right. trying to gain on you guys. Okay. Uh, Core's gonna grab. There's a joke in there somewhere about the rooster being hit with a surprise snake. But that's a little bit too on the. Uh, bum -wah -wah. So we're not gonna do that. Grab the snake and he's gonna take it by the tail and start whipping it around. Oh. And I want you to give me advantage on this because this is exactly the motion that he uses to use his glaive. Oh. Sure, there's no advantage in 3.5. Damn it! But instead, I will oh. give you a bonus to it. Oh, okay. I'll give you so there's bonuses, not work. advantage. He's gonna whip that snake back at that guy. Go for it. Okay, so we got an eight. We are 30 minutes in and we've got to the first incident of someone whipping their snake out. Oh, I know. I'm five years old. I'm very aware of it. <laughs> and Zena said, there's a snake in my boot. No, there's a snake on your neck. <laughs> oh, I get the reference, though. For total. Plus the two I'm giving you. Not oh, 20. God. Yeah. They even have the right color scheme almost. 20. Dirty 20. You definitely hit Dirty this 20? guy. There's no way he's going to avoid Oh, without that. modifiers. And oh, I wanted to name him. Uh, <laughs> oh, your name was Steven. <laughs> Steven and as a the result, snake. you knock him back to... He's in sixth place, so he's now in seventh place instead. <laughs> Someone else is catching. Take that! You're right, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> but if you guys want to catch up, you're going to have to attack Driving the demon backwards. with cheating and throwing snakes. And, uh... You want, is there anything you want to do except riding? Otherwise, I'm just going to ask you for ride check. Uh, no, he's going to... He'll be like, let me try... He, like, reaches back without looking into the bag that Ooh, Cora's my. holding onto mm -hmm. with all the, the marbles yeah. and whatever random pieces of metal and shit he has. Uh, and he takes and he's just like, ah! and he's going to throw it uh, towards, I guess, the next rider next to <laughs> Ranged attack roll. Yeah. Not one. Not 20. Oh, oh my God. What's Dingo could do that? that? Min -max I campaign. I don't know. Either <laughs> I suck or I'm great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they rolled really high to dodge, but it's, of course, not enough to beat a nat 20. So, <laughs> do they uh, actually take someone's head off? Marbles, the one in front of you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, like, are you just broadsiding them with marbles? Into his face. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, like, one gets into his eye, and he, like, pulls to the, the side. Eye out? Marble in your eye? Yeah, exactly. Ow! Uh, and it's room for your other eyeball, bitch. Yeah, and he crashes out. I feel out. like having a glass eye, sucker. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, like, like fucking Mario Kart, he just go. crashes out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm laughing my ass off at this moment. It's just... Yeah, full-on Mario Kart. This is Mario Kart. Yeah, this is a fucking blue shell. Oh, yeah, basically. So, you know, in fourth place, you're catching eye. up again. Oh, shit. Could I just, like, 
Could we just get Cor to just like toss himself as a blue shell? <laughs> you want me to toss? I mean, he is a demon. Throw yourself, you're the blue shell. I don't think but he can throw himself. Before no. you do anything else, it's I'm just turn. fucking around. Uh, third place is going to try to knock you back a notch. Okay. And they rolled an 18. I mean, that hits me. Yeah, they rolled an 18 to what are they called? Like the they called bolas. Oh so it, like, yeah. Wraps around oh, you. the spinning oh, shit. And balls now, with all the chain between them. Suffer a minus four penalty until you get rid of that. Jesus. Ah. Considering her rolls, that's uh, pretty bad. I'm gonna try to bite it. Well, give me, first give me ride check because you're still riding this thing. It's a uh, eleven. <gasps> okay, I also rode an eleven. So like. The minus four fourth though. Place and fifth place, you guys are neck and neck. Oh, that's right after now. the modifier. Can she I bite rolled the, well. the bola chain off. <laughs> <laughs> You may. I'm not even going to make you roll a check for that. Oh, okay. Um, absolutely, you can. So. <laughs> I just spent my turn doing that. Yeah, exactly. So you managed to get the bolas off. They fall away, and you're back to oh your God. normal uh, riding. I'm going to... Can I Can I keep the, the chain in my mouth? Sure. <laughs> sure, you can do that. It's a snack. Cord, it's your turn. What are you doing? I'm looking at spells. Well, How I... close am I to the next sand sailor? You guys are neck and neck. Oh. Okay, there's one right next to me. Uh, yeah, in like I would say like if you have like five foot. What are they reach, gonna pull out? Like ten foot reach, you can reach them. Okay, awesome. Create water. How big are their arms? Wait, what? Uh, where? Like, they where had they create, create water this entire time. Mud, basically. Oh my god. Okay, so you create water in front of them. <laughs> yeah. I like to think that it would know, probably stick to them. Poor guy, he had this ability, as he was like so thirsty and shit. No, he, you, you said that he that he was he only needed one of those things. I assume he was fine for thirst. Uh -huh. So funny enough, I didn't know that he had create water. Because uh, <laughs> I described dying of thirst earlier. Yeah. So, so I like to think he just we forgot. Can, and he's like, oh, right. We can blame my stupidity on core stupidity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that he just Please forgot. tell me he's a low intelligence character to make up I'm for sorry. it. Very high <laughs> wisdom, very low intelligence. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember he has the ability he to be good. He has some in his hand like, oh. Hmm. Yeah, oh, great. Oh, <laughs> uh, I didn't forget those. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling better. Um, Magic. Anyway, what happens with the sand sailor? I just made into a mud sailor. They roll a six <laughs> on their reflex, so they're not dodging that, and pretty ah. much like they're sand sailing and just, and then immediately get stuck in the mud. You have nope. taken out number three, meaning you Does guys are now third place. Yes. Yeah, but it is Encounter's turn, and they're like, "Oh, water! It's a great idea. How about fire?" What? And second oh place God. throws a fire bomb back at you guys. But I think that's a bit of an escalation. A nine. I assume nah. that doesn't hit. You. Doesn't hit. Damn. Yeah. The firebomb just explodes beside you, actually turning a little bit of the sand probably into like molten glass. Yeah. Um, but you race right. A general firebomb probably isn't hot enough to do that. Sorry, this is actually just me being pandemic again, but melting glass is actually really freaking hard. The things that do that get really damn hot. Also, it's fascinating to watch and moderately terrifying. He's always Passive, bringing somebody who doesn't do affect it. you. You're still in third place, Rooster. Give me a ride oh check. Ride Are you check. able to catch up to second place? Yeah, I got a 19. Oh, Ooh, and I got a nat one. <gasps> uh, second Ooh. place. I don't know. Maybe he threw himself off balance by throwing the firebomb. Then can I, while I'm coming up, yeah. I have the chain of the bola in yeah. my mouth. I oh, he still has the bola in the mouth. And like, uh, toss Dingo. It. Yeah, so what's happening is the guy actually. He threw the firebomb, but he lit his hand on fire, and he's like shaking it out. He's already distracted. And then you come yeah, that'd be a bit hot. Him. He's completely wiped out. He he biffs it, and you advance. Biffed it to second place, right behind Mark. Oh Marco. no! Not the drow. The right, like the finish oh line God. is in sight. Uh, is this a premiere? No, no, I'm live at right now. now Crack to see who's gonna take. Marco, Polo, buddy, <laughs> Core, what are you doing? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you ready for something wild? Yeah, let's oh, go. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Corlett leans over to you and he says, uh, there's a benefit to winning this, right? Money! Oh, yeah, big cash. Excellent. I cast Updraft. Updraft? Ooh. Oh, that's probably a 3.5 spell. I don't know any of those. Detritus and loose debris on the ground beneath you begin to spin around caught in a small vortex. Uh, up, an updraft conjures forth rushing air that propels you upwards. You gain 10 feet per level of altitude. So I guess like we get 20 feet, feet height. 
Would that be a little, above? Not that little. Ten foot tall sand tornado lifts your sand surfer up, Rooster. Ten oh, it's ten feet per level, not their level, the level of cast. That makes more sense. Feet up into the air, and you're now basically a flying, rushing towards the finish line. Oh, okay. Does it count so as a sand surfer? They're flying. Sand. Yeah, because yeah. I can only cast it on personally. Ah, so cool. you and I are now hurled ah. ten feet into the air. <laughs> oh, Rooster's fucking loving this. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. Oh, Rooster's so an adrenaline oh, junkie. Yeah. And we. Oh my god. Turn final round so encounter goes first marco sees this and says hey that's a little bit of cheating How a little bit something? out of everything what? that's what the cheating part does he have something because he's not ready to i mean they had a guy freaking Nobody throw is. a firebomb no. you know what no he doesn't he's like <laughs> he's a good at two he's shoes like flabbergasted he's just like pointing he's like ah, that, ah. yeah and he just focuses on trying to outride you now he rolled a ride check of 10. Rooster, what's your ride check? Uh -oh. Dingo, don't dingo oh, this. I also rolled a 10. <gasps> you guys are head. Oh, no. You're like both in first place right now. Oh, shit. Please okay, let them tie. Okay, it's the funniest okay. thing this ever. neck and neck right now. Let's do it. Go. Do it, Felix. Go no, for the tie. Is there anything else you want to do, Rooster? Uh, if there's anything you can do. Yeah, well, Felix, I'm you dairy. Above, so you're rival above energy you're intensifies. Like neck neck, you're 10 feet above Marco Sand Sailor. Uh, it's a photo finish, but you were above hmm. the photo. You just shove, shove core off. <laughs> I mean, I just want to like, no, I wouldn't do that. Um, yeah. I want to. Blue shell. Yeah, but you're shell. also in the lead. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna throw core at someone. Yeah. Okay. Wahoo, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and, uh, okay, okay. He's gonna um, throw core. He's gonna take that bag that. Um, Core has in his hand and he's what? Yeah. upside down and just empty. <laughs> oh, and like yes. a oh my god! Metal Hopefully, it wasn't important. And nails and. Oh my god. Uh, well, it's just random metal shit it. that he's picked up. Yeah. But, uh, so. Why is yeah, he having so much random metal? He just essentially rains down all oh this shit god. on top of us. Yeah, okay, give me a ranged attack roll and I'm gonna give um, Marco some penalties on this one. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, also, Rose, so d d is something you would like to get into, but you don't have the mental energy to get into it. Honestly, at that point, I'd actually recommend Baldur's Gate 3. It's close enough to actual D&D somehow that you can play that game and you can do it single player. Or you can bring in other people and just do your own campaign because it's expensive enough to do that. And it doesn't really need a high-end PC. Of course, it's easier to run with that. But if you turn the settings down, it's still perfectly fine on some older platforms even. Also, that depends if you, you know, you like isometric, top-down style things. I have issues with them personally, but it's a fun game. Otherwise, great way to get into d and I'd recommend it. I mean, I'd also recommend waiting for it to be on sale as well, because, I mean, it'll probably happen eventually on Steam. It's worth it. One, to try to avoid it. Um. Oh, he rolled really high. Oh, no. What do you get? <laughs> Rooster rolled only a 13. Oh. A 13? Yeah. Okay, um... What did you Marco throw get? that stuff down. Yeah. It should have messed up Marco, but he actually rolled a 17. Ooh! So... He's a fucking umbrella. Oh, he's really good. Yeah! yeah. No... Oh, Marco's so cool, and he does all the things perfectly! Yeah, and he he's a cheating! He's just, like, dodging it. He looks really cool doing it. <laughs> he's so cool! Damn it! The cool, that, calm, polite draft. Height ...and settles right back down beside Marco. Cor, you have the final move. Otherwise, this might end up being a tie. Oh! The, the, the finish line is right there. You also see like all the bleachers again. Like people are cheering. Do it! Oh, this no, is. Marco, I'm Marco. actually getting excited, man. Oh my god! Him, yeah, you can reach out and touch him. Okay. Uh, hey, Cor is gonna bend down, reach out, put his fingers like oh, underneath this, his Marco sand sailor, and just go and just like. <laughs> so like, you're gonna reach into the sand that's moving quite quickly under the board. <gasps> Hmm. Oh, yeah, that would actually be sandblasting him then. Ooh. It might take some damage. Well, not all of the sand sailors touching the sand, right? Because it wouldn't it be kind of a curve? It's like I mean, a kayak. If you, what we can just say is you try to, like, you know, push, like, how much damage does he take? The sand I'm, I'm trying to flip it like a pancake. I'm trying to flip, flip it. it like a pancake. So I'm going to make you roll Constitution? a strength check oh. by his riding skill. Okay. Ooh. Let's fucking go. He's been doing Let's so go. far so good. Blue shell. Blue but shell. so has Gothi's player. Shell. Sorry, Nat horse player. Oh my Nat God. one. Oh, 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 this is such a min max session. Oh my God. <laughs> How many nat 20s and yeah. nat ones has Holy this shit. been? I'm good. confiscating those dice. Yeah. <laughs> this is definitely crits now. and misses okay, only. Um, but with a nat one, Marco, like, he has no chance to try to stabilize from this. He <sighs> literally throw up his sand racer. Uh, it's a sand sailor like a pancake. The cheating didn't seem to be what everyone was doing. Completely wipes out. Um, probably like falls under the sand sailor and oh. you guys whoosh past the finish line. 
and you win. <gasps> and the crowd Woo! loses their minds. Everybody's cheering. I'm just hoping just like, Marco yeah, just rolls over the sand to get second. And another guy. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are like in the crowd. They're also maybe booing you a little bit. Yeah, a little bit like cheating. Marco. Marco's certainly like a fan favorite. He's a bit of a pretty boy. So people really yeah. like him. It's also really cool and awesome. Mm. I don't know why, but now that we're talking about, it's the pretty boy who's really polite and also a drow. And he just had a defeating, humiliating loss by his definitely not rival and friend who only won by cheating and using someone else's help to do it. Oh my. Marco killed by a meatball. Honestly, I've seen Marco Meatball's channel. Good stuff. Good reviews of music. But uh, <laughs> if there's not a villain art coming up, I will be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> or at least antagonistic. But you win. Yay! Woo! I mean, Rooster's losing his shit. I don't know how else to say this. Now split it 50 50. Like, ah! yeah. He's like staring at his hands and vibrating. Yeah. <laughs> I love Sansei. Okay, like, it's the cheating that gets the best uh, part. Core is just kind of caught up in the energy. Everyone is like, everyone's cheering, and he's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm shouting! Oh, Why am I shouting? Happy, he biffed that guy. He's like, yeah, fuck you, Marco. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know who you are. A few people in the crowd are like, like they see you, uh, core, like cheering. They're like, "Yeah, what the, who the fuck is that guy?" Woo, woo. <laughs> yeah. They're just a little confused. Yeah. Eat confused sand. demon. He's like kicking dirt everywhere. Yeah. And, woo. Marco like didn't even make it past the finish line. He's like laying flat in front of the Dead. finish line as some of the other sailors pass him. Aww. Um, I think there was like three or four that wiped out, so only six total make it across the finish. Damn. Line. <laughs> okay. Um, Rooster is gonna. Go over to Marco and oh him up. yeah, you see. Is he going to get like him across the line or just talk to him underneath the his yeah, sand sailor? Yeah, he's just gonna move it. Yeah. Okay, uh, you move it up. Yeah. Says, yeah. Oh. Oh, thanks, thanks, Rooster. Be you. <laughs> just being a dick. <laughs> you sure? What did. a little brat. Yeah. Congratulations, and he sticks out a hand. Yeah. He's still being nice. He kind of like slaps it down a bit, but not like in a like a mean way. He's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Down yeah. it goes. Yeah. I'm getting so much brat energy well, right now. Oh my god! I guess I'll let that be a lesson to me. Make, Make sure to cheat. Rooster ten times in a row. Eleventh oh. one is his. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you remember that. Oh. <laughs> I sure will, buddy. Oh my god! I, just... I don't know which part's better. That he's playing Marco. That Felix is playing Marco so incredibly cool. It's like, even when he's being snide, he's also still kind of being nice about it. But then Rooster, Dingo is playing him off completely nonchalant. It's like, ha, nobody ever beats him 10 times in a row. I can't, the loved one's his. It's like, yeah, I'm happy about that. He really shouldn't be. I just, I love her characters. They're all such gremlins. So much gremlin energy. Yeah, it gives you... <laughs> Like a slap on the shoulder, <laughs> uh, and then he starts Why dragging is his chat creating a cat? Oh yeah, Jessica and like runs over. Yeah, Core is still there, probably just like soaking in the cheering. Well, after a little bit, he'd be like, "Oh shit, my amulet." And he's got to go back. Yeah, to he probably it needs that. Pretend that he didn't forget all about it for half a second. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah. So you both head back to your sand sailor, Jessica, and um, Core. You're able to get your amulet finally unstuck, and let a rooster isn't like death gripping the bars and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you have your amulet back. Cool. He you ties have, it back around his neck. You have all your gear. This is what I get for not You're drinking really regular coffee and eating sailing. decaf. Thank you. I don't... Of course I am. I'm... I'm it's... It's easy. <laughs> I'm... So you must have done it many times? First time. Oh, uh, uh, no, I just... I saw you doing it and I, and I was able to copy... Copy you. Copy and paste I even. I appreciate it. You did a good job. You really biffed that one guy. Why is biff <laughs> yeah, a term did. they're using? <laughs> <clears throat> So then we're in agreement. I helped you, and now you owe me a favor. Money. Okay. Good. Oh, he's just okay uh, with it. I need to find the person in your town, your s settlement, who has the most information. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I could do that. Good. We get paid, right? Turns and at this announcer. point, <laughs> people are rushing oh, you. The announcement's like, and we have an unexpected victor, Rooster. And you know, they're all cheering stuff. And then it's like yeah, it's the me. crowd, including the organizers, are like rushing you. They're handing you like a plump bag of gold. <laughs> you get those promised 100 gold pieces. <laughs> and uh, 
people also try to do the thing, you know, where they lift you up and like crowd surf. Oh, you. but he's really <laughs> heavy. Realizing how heavy you two are, they <laughs> they're quickly straining. Give up, and they're yeah. just like, yeah, woo, high just five. Circle around, <laughs> we can't lift them. And um, there's a bit of a celebration. Or awkwardly complies with the high fives. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like, okay, all right, all right, sure. A demon being too yeah. eagerly accepted. Uh, they put it's freaking three of him out. on like a podium. There's some. Uh, well, I guess hear. there's no photos, so instead they do drawings of you guys. Yeah, they just have to pose for how long? Sit there for half an <laughs> they hour. They don't have one of those old timey like guy puts his head under the blanket and does like <laughs> oh, ding God. thing. Uh, Pause no, for I the think portrait. They just have three old guys under blankets drawing. Oh my okay. God. <laughs> Either you way, like, you guys get cool portraits out of it. Oh, cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. Fucking like character. Considering how good some of their art is, I wonder if yeah. Breeze or Dingo did art of that. Celebrations are winding down. People are going home for the day. It's getting like late afternoon to evening. All right. Uh, we'll move a bit to the side and then Rooster will turn to Core and go, uh, All right. Well, um, you want some of this? And he points to the gold. Oh, just giving it yes. up. Yes, that would be beneficial. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And he just kind of like grabs a handful, gives it to you. Then he's just like, mm, grabs another handful and gives it to you. <laughs> Core is just like, uh, you want to make sure it's a 50-50 split? No, no, no. Oh, Here, right. take a couple more. Oh. There you go. I don't know how much he gave him. So at this point, Rooster's giving you like, 70 gold pieces. Okay, wow. <laughs> Damn. Uh, so... He's not good at math. I'm Rooster. And what's your name? My name is Core. Oh, that's a cool name. The core of the plan, even. Of, like, the plan. The plan core? of cores. The plan of cores is part of... That's a core. Like from a guitar? Do you play guitar? I don't know what any of those things are. Oh, you look God. like you play guitar. I've always wanted to join a band. But I don't know how to play an instrument. <laughs> Be pretty cool though. Anyway, so what did you want? Oh my god! I wanted god. you to take me to your most well-informed person in town. That's Boris. Okay, Boris. Boris, knows. Boris is great. Okay. Is he Where? an old Russian with a? Can I? Is find he a Boris? bear? Is he a talking Boris. bear? Let him be a talking bear. I'll Please let Boris be a talking Excellent. bear. Show the way then. Great. And I will also say that, um, Rooster, you've never seen a demon like Kor before. Like there's actually some has demons he seen on the other surface demons? Oh. that are in this world because Abrith has made peace with a lot of the surface dwellers. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kor, so, like a Baphos demon, you have never seen before. So, a demon can make peace in this version that they're doing. Okay, yeah, this is a very different demon than I'm used to. So it's more treated as just a separate race than D and D demons, which are very much the <laughs> fuck no variety. So you guys huh. make your way back into the town. That's kind of interesting. Where uh, somewhere along the edge of town, uh, Rooster, your friend Boris, has his workshop. I love that you tone. You arrive there after it's like, like relaxing when the sun is just and to just set. like a good and, fireside uh, you song. You head in. It's um, it's certainly like workshop vibes. Like there is crap everywhere that's like half broken. Am I the only person listening to that little intro going, if someone doesn't start shouting out some lyrics, well, I guess more crooning out lyrics that are a sad tune in Spanish, I am going to be so surprised. Half finished. Uh, core, right away you get the impression that this guy appears eh, to be some time. sort of metal worker. Because there's a lot of unfinished metal pieces around. Hmm. Building is in decent shape, but kind of like Jessica, it seems to be a bit of a fix. Not on. Over. It's got a lot of patchwork, but it's done with love. Boris, Bor Bor Bebop. You just hear from the inside, just. Bori, Bor the Explorer, Bor. <laughs> oh God, damn, Bor, Dingo. that's a new one. Come in, Rooster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulls in. Oh my God. Uh, Jessica, like. This is probably... Yeah, you you fling open the workshop doors, like these big double like barn doors, and you pull Jessica outside. I put her in the usual spot. Bori. I want to introduce you to Corey. my best friend of all time, Gore. Oh, wow. Gore. That was fast. This is Boris, also my best friend of all time. Boris had like his back turned to you and then turns around. It's like, nice to meet you. Oh, hi. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello. Uh, so you're expecting Gore. someone else? Hello. You are different. Yes. So are you. <laughs> He's blue. You know what? Fair enough. What does yeah. Boris look like? <laughs> Boris bear, bear, is bear. A bugbear. Almost there. 
ripe age. He's certainly starting to turn gray uh, in human. I'm taking the win on this one, damn it. We have a bear named Boris. Bugbear, but still a bear. Ugh. In terms, probably somewhere in like his late 50s around there. How old does the like bugbear get? This is salt and pepper bugbear. Salt and pepper bugbear. Uh, he's <laughs> really got like long welding goggles on. He's got a big apron he's working with. Gloves. And yeah, bit of singed fur. A bit of singed fur <laughs> here and gloves. there. Big gloves. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he's a metal worker. He does blacksmithing, the fantasy version of welding, all that good stuff. He's also quite tall. I mean, he's probably like six. What feet fantasy tall. welding look so, like? Damn, a tall, a tall it's probably old bugbear. Probably a rare day when he has to look up at somebody. <laughs> it is, and he does look at you. Doug impressed, also confused because he's never seen your kind before. Pardon me asking, but but what are you? I mean, demon. I know you, demon. I'm guessing. It's Core. I'm Core. I just I just introduced him. <laughs> he did. He did. He's so silly. Okay. You, oh yeah. You God. know what? Fine. It's Core. Not nice to meet you, Core. Nice to meet you. Now, too. what the hell did you do with Jessica? And he looks at Jessica. It's like nails stuck in her and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably a good, like, core foot. Yeah, this is just a, yeah. like an impression of a footprint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one was me. Yeah, he, I don't know. I, I ran into him in the middle of the race. I thought he was a shark. I, oh, cool. <laughs> Sharks are cool. Did Dingo actually I forget that? I think she actually did for a second. I would have rather, too. I think sharks are cool. Mm -hmm. Cor goes back to like playing with whatever tools are on the wall that he was he was turned to previously. Yeah. Uh, and Boris is looking over your sand racer. Well, uh, oh my god! I can get her fixed up for you. As you always do. Ooh. He uh, he made Jessica. He made my wife. Oh, so he actually made his wife. Oh, oh god. She's a very fine woman. <laughs> um, He's just she playing it straight. Sailor, but... Sand sailor, yeah. Sand sailor, yeah. But, you know, I'm joking about it, but considering that there is a long history of personifying ships as female and putting figureheads at the front that the guys then roll over, it's probably not that weird in hindsight. Sure, yeah, I mean, gets it's still weird, but kind of things, historically so. weird. Well, you said, you know, a wife is somebody who you care and love and you would do anything for, and that's Jessica. You should, like, you, Boris, should really, like, build your own wife or something. You seem lonely. <laughs> you have wow. the tools. You literally have made Jessica. You should just do it for yourself. Can we please change the subject? Okay. <laughs> Rooster tells me that you have the most information in this. <laughs> oh my God, town. Rooster. That's a burn. Well, I know a thing or two about the uh, hounds here and there. Yeah. Boris knows everything. I've always known him. Uh, We've known each other for so long, like a whole week, two months. It's been great. He's my absolute best friend. It's been nine years. Nine years. That, that's <laughs> the one. Look, nine years, two months, it's all the same. Um, I've noticed. I know the happenings of the town. So Honestly, at this point, I could see Rooster either being super young or super old with no middle ground on this thing because the lack of time sense is just way too funny otherwise. What do you need to know? I might be able to give you a hint. I need to know how to get passage to the capital city in your area. Do they have a capital city? Will that be Kikoma? That okay, how do I get to... Kikoma. So, Kikoma. You, Directions point me in the general general direction. Well, considering the sun. we are at the westmost town of the province, ah, it go is east. one of the more um, eastmost towns of the province. You're on the wrong so, side. It's going to be about a week's travel or so, yeah. Uh, yeah how long was he dying away. of thirst before? Um, how would you end up here if you're trying to go there? This is like the way opposite way. Bad directions? Is there a specific reason why he's here and not near the capital city? I think Cor just sucks at directions. <laughs> okay, thanks. Maybe, maybe he probably got like dropped right there thing. and just went the wrong direction. <laughs> weast. To, like, Go cut weast. Back, cut back to like two months ago, Cor standing in front of one of those pickets, like one of those directional signs. Oh There's my God. both one very clearly one reading the west and the one very clearly reading east of Kikoma, and Cor is just like, mm, I can't read. And <laughs> yeah, in the opposite the direction. I can't read. <laughs> he's like, this feels right. Or he's just like, you know what? Got it. And he walks in the opposite. Oh direction. my god! It's literally his own fault too. That's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> my instincts are never wrong, <laughs> except for when they are. Although they got him in here, so fun fact: they were wrong. Yeah, fun fact: Cor can't read common. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, anyways, Boris. Uh, so, oh, That's actually well, kind of fascinating. Um, sorry to hear that. It's yeah, it's gonna be a while east. Oh, there's art of the NPCs. But what on do you want missile? there? It's kind of a stinky Ooh, place. Yeah, what I definitely have to check that out later. Cor gets immediately kind of like uncomfortable, and he's it's. I have business there. Gotta fight someone? 
Yeah, sure, that tracks. Yes. <laughs> I am fighting someone. Are you fighting like a big creature? Probably. Yeah. Yes, the biggest. The biggest. Oh, you signed up for the the Kikamo Arena. What? I did. He did? Yes. Okay. I want to go. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I don't yeah, know. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, mm, Rooster. Rooster? You that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a little out of your league, boy. It is uh, uh, It's uh, something that I'm doing, and <laughs> children like you shouldn't be in the arena. Please tell me that this is just Dingo having fun with Felix making the mistake of improvising the entire thing about the arena. But it's it's Felix. He could have thought this out, but Dingo being absolutely obsessed with it does kind of fit with the gremlin energy of her character. Oh, God. I'm not a child. I'm Rooster. But you are, uh, you are a child, clearly. Oh. Look at you. You, like, taps him on the head. So tiny. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, like... <laughs> Actually, I don't know how old I am, but I'm not a child. No, see, you you can't. He's like, he kind of looks at me and he's like, ah, see, they told me that they would see that. And he pulls out like a, a small what? pamphlet made made in abyssal that they gave him when he first came to the surface. And he's like, see, number one, rule number one of kids, children, they will tell you they are not children. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. I don't know how to get through that. Um, <laughs> that seems like a. Forest turns to you like he got you there. <laughs> uh, Just roasting the rooster. And I'm going. Uh, you, you I've are... always wanted to fight like the biggest, baddest monster. And that's what I'm going to do. I mean, well, not at your level. I'm already going there and I'll be yeah. killing it all so you won't even have a chance. Well, to, no, so. I, now I got to do it. What? You're going to beat They're me too. So I'm going to come buddies. with you. No, you yeah, yeah, murder yeah. buddies. Hobos even. Yeah, no. And go go back into the, the dirt. No, she the... understands my dreams. No, she Jessica tell him. I need to do. <laughs> if the Jessica ship answers. Needs to stay. Please. Jessica does not respond. Aww. Jessica knows. She knows what I've been dreaming and yearning for. My dream murder. is to fight the biggest, baddest monster and then get a great story from it and come back and tell everybody about it. So this is perfect. This is perfect. Turns to Boris, grabs his head, and pulls him in close. This is perfect. <laughs> oh, is it? Mm. Yes, yes. I'm surprised Boris isn't fighting for him to go just because he would get peace for five minutes and or years. It could go either way, apparently. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting so many flashbacks to different moments from the first Fool's Gold campaign where she animated Sips doing things like this, just grabbing people and looking like, ah! I can even imagine this art, and it's... Oh, I need to go check out the art of this later. Oh, my God. And, yeah, Robert, we definitely have the thing of Dingo playing the child and Breeze playing the adult, because Dingo definitely... They have a special type of character. We are very aware of that. Oh, my God. Yes, Cor, you're, you are my best friend, my best buddy, my best pal. That's the whole seven years. Everything, like, what is happening? Uh, what, what? It'll be great. I know all you need to know about... The Drinky Lands. Drinky Lands. Oh the Drinky God. Lands. Yeah. Oh, my God. Core stops, though, as if a, a brain, like a thought, has, like, well, I mean, itself into his brain and he's had an rooster. idea. Uh -huh. and he kind of stops and he goes, wait, you can get me there quicker. What? Yeah. Okay. Um. Very well, then we'll, we can do that. You can take me to the capital city. And you can go and fight. Well, we we will go and fight in, with the big. big You're just creature. making something yes. up, and yeah, the only yeah, person yeah. who still believes it seems to be Core. Right. No, sorry, Rooster. And, um, how quickly do you think you could get us there? Hmm. Hmm. Can you show me a map? Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Let me Where go get my map. Since I don't think I can talk you out of this. Uh, and he does. Considering how bad at time he is, any estimate he gives is probably going to be wrong. Oh, that's the joke. It's going to be wrong. And he goes fetches a map and uh, lays it out, and it shows a yeah map of the Nobani Desert. And yet, Nobani there! The map, you can see you are I know, I made the, the joke, west, I'm going to keep doing it. The capital city of this uh, province is very far in the east. Yeah, he definitely Ooh. looks at the map and goes, I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Two illiterate people. Well, can you um, point it out to me? And he does, he points it, it's like, well, you are here, Thank you. and you want to go over there, uh -huh. across oh, this entire All you need is in this book! Mm -hmm. You can't read. Uh, which is going to be like a week or two travel. Like it's, it's, oh my it's, God. it's a, quite a journey. So yeah. How yeah. badly do you need to go there? Probably yeah, pretty badly. Yeah. It is my life's mission. What do you Might said? be accurate. Exactly me. No, we're just, I, we're on the exact same. I highly doubt it. No, we are so on the same length, like the same wavelength right oh now. Oh my God. I should not have spoken. I should not have said anything. <laughs> I'm not even sure. Is that Felix saying I shouldn't have said anything? in character for Boris? Or is that just Felix saying it and getting picked up by the mic? Because frankly, 
This is kind of awesome. <laughs> It'll be great, Boris, and uh, then I'll come back and then I'll tell you all about it. You always do. How many times have you done this already? Out? Oh no, that's what makes it great. That's what makes it dangerous. Yeah, I'll be fine. Magic. I got him. Look how big he is. I am the most dangerous thing in the in any proximity. Yep. <laughs> oh my, my point God. exactly. You just Honestly, I think guy, Rooster might be more dangerous. Run off. He helped me sand race. He beat a guy up. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he threw like nails and stuff at another guy, and then he threw a snake called Steven at him. Okay, this is not <laughs> happening. What? This is happening. Yes, is. Bro, the okay, Steven! Have, we have agreed he is going to be snake. my transportation. Yep. <laughs> We've already agreed on this. Well. Look, Boris, 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 Boris. Like goes goes up and like like he's really tall and Rooster is yeah. not so he's Brings just like yeah. grabs his arm like grabbing like, the big head buddy. of a really big dog yeah. yeah yeah he like turns him away from Cor Rooster and he walks with him and he's like Boris Boris buddy my pal oh no Borino, Rooster you know that I am am very capable is he I have all the brain stuff that I need for this. <laughs> Even Dingo couldn't keep a straight face saying that. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm absolutely loving how oblivious this character is. It's just, it's really relaxing gremlin energy. Along I should have called this entire video gremlin and energy. It would have been perfect. That I can do in ah. order to fight some big creature. And plus, like, I haven't really left this town. Ever? How long? Ten About years. Nine to ten years. That long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly that one. So he'll be back in a week and or century. Maybe it's a great. This is this is fate. This is destiny. This is. <laughs> look at him. Look at the guy sparkling in the uh, embers of the floor. Just as core standing there, who's just like, I'm so hungry right now. I haven't eaten in days. <laughs> look at him. Like he's perfect. He's he's a perfect guy. Oh, he'll I can just imagine the face thing would draw right here. Back. Just like, oh no. Whatever. Look. Yeah, there's like there's like silence hangs in the air as Boris is like looking deep into your eyes, Rooster. He's like judging this decision right now. Yeah, it is pretty bad. It'll be fine. Yeah, nothing could go wrong. Probably. Not lying. Yeah. Look, I'll yeah. fix up Jessica as I always do, and then you just tell me everything when you get back. Great. Why don't you get this poor fella something to eat over at the Funny Bone? Oh. They actually named a food place the Funny Bone. Oh my god, of course they did. It's such a stupid name. I do like the representation we have right now of Boris, who is very much the, oh my god, why is this annoyance here? But also, just especially this last part where they're trying to talk them out of doing something dangerous. They very much are treating Rooster kind of like the neighborhood kid who's just competent enough that they could do a lot of stupid shit, but not competent enough that they should get away with it because it might uh, backfire and kill them. Also known as a standard teenager, actually, now that I think about it. Hmm. Yeah, that, it's, yeah, it's basically that. Oh it's like an God. uncle relationship. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, I want to show him to Amelia. Who? He's, okay. He's not... Uh, he's, yeah, he's my best friend. Of course I have to show him off. Is Amelia also your wife? No. No, Jessica. That's just Jessica. Okay. <laughs> your culture is still weird to me. And I'm yes, yes, it is. As I go. B bring me some food back when you when you come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'll be fine. All right. I mean, he has all the gold. Thanks. He probably can get okay, it. cool. So, let's go. Okay. <laughs> you leave uh, poor Boris behind to contemplate his life choices and he does get to work on he made a few Jessica, bad decisions as he always does Brewster you know you you get the impression he's genuinely worried about you going mm. away would with Rooster notice that demon though who's kind he's never seen before but... yeah I do hear nine out of ten times running off with demons into the middle of nowhere on your own that you can't even recognize turns out bad but I'm assuming his uh, wisdom is set to negative one at this point He's yeah, probably it's a bit of a tall ask. Yeah, he's gonna take him his time to think about it. Yeah, but regardless, for now, you guys head out of the workshop and you kind of head closer towards the uh, the center of the town of Teak, where there's more of the shops and taverns and all that. <laughs> and there you do see the all familiar tavern called the, the Funny, Funny Bone. Bone.
Which is that Mr. Mr. You certainly frequent all the time, yes. if I'm not Ooh. mistaken. Yes. Lounge music? That's one of his favorite pubs, bars, whatever the fuck, taverns. He has Are there differences between those three? Of, um, mm. I don't drink out enough to know. He mm. has blacked out several times. <laughs> oh my he's got, god. He's got lots of stories, and half of them he can't even remember anymore. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Standard bar tour or stories. In you go, the, the saloon doors swing open proudly. Actual saloon yes, doors? What? Uh, with poor and toe. Also, hey, the OCD gamer. Thanks, man. Will you watch the TFS? Oh, table. TFS at the table is D&D. I don't know. Honestly, this is the first time I've reacted to any live D&D stuff. I just wanted more of the Fool's Gold campaign. I'm not sure if I'd do this with other places. It really does depend. Mostly because I just really don't know if I'd like their style of it yet. I knew I would like Dingo Doodles already. And TFS is a pretty good choice because I love everything that Team Four Star does. But I'll have to find out. Enter the tavern. It's definitely like you can tell that Rooster's really excited because he gets to show off a friend. <laughs> Look at this friend. <laughs> and see, uh, I have friends. The funny bone. You see this tavern before your core. It's actually a well-maintained establishment. Oh, like, was not expecting outside, that. Everything's kind of dusty and messy, but in here, it's actually a nice vibe. It's certainly got some saloon vibes, but a nice it's well saloon. cared for. It's clean. It doesn't smell like shit in here. It's indoors and there's food. Core likes it. There yeah, no, go. good reasons. Exactly. And uh, while there's a couple servers here and there tending to some of the guests, you can see uh, the main one is the bartender behind the counter. That is a Rooster, who you know as Amelia. Yeah. Oh, is, Amelia's the bartender. Half-elf. She's a half-elf lady, quite young, probably in her like mid to late 20s. Oh, Looks very like young. Timid in appearance, but at the same time, she does have this place under control and is running <laughs> it very well, so... You know, I'll leave first impressions to you. Considering half elves can get pretty old. Guys coming in. Amelia! Yeah, she waves back and it's like, Rooster, so good to see you. Hey, yeah. Uh, <laughs> friend. Look, I have a friend. Oh, another one. We another one? Oh, he's done this before. Of course he's done this before. Probably to everyone but Marco. Just met today. Yeah. He's my <laughs> best friend. You're, uh, you're a little scary. Thank you. I love it. You're welcome. Uh, so uh, what can I get for you two? Duck. The largest portion of meat you have, please. Well, that'd be the big guy over there, but I'll get you something more prepared. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Rooster? Uh, usual. What is your usual? Mm, I imagine if there's some equivalent to fish and chips in this world, I feel like Rooster would be fucking down for that. Chicken. Oh. I should have probably had lunch before this because I don't know why. Just the mention of fish and chips right now just hit me so hard. It's like my stomach just rolled a nat one on not making it painful. And it failed so hard. Chicken fingies. Chicken fingies. Chicken fingies. Chicken. Dinosaur shaped. Bring oh, my yeah, God. Of course yeah, they would do dinosaur yeah, shaped. Yeah. Monster shaped. Would that be like insulted like to a, core? Um, Albear. Yeah. Dragon. Albear, like a... Beholder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gelatinous cube is just a square. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. And she like writes it down. And monster nuggies for you. I'll yeah. be right back. <laughs> and she <laughs> heads off to the back. And then uh, he also would go for like big pint of beer. Yeah, it's like a cocktail of a bunch of liquors. And to be honest, it's probably fucking disgusting. But he enjoys it so much. It's like one of everything. Yeah, mm. kind of like drink. that. And then he and then she he just called it the kitchen sink for him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty great. much. I've seen places that do him. this. Uh, you shouldn't. And it also probably has some glitter in there. Nice. So yeah, she sends the, the glitter adds the flavor while the food's being prepared. And poison comes back. Lots you, of poison. Serves you the uh, kitchen sink drink. Yeah. She turns to you, Cora, and says, "Anything for you, big guy?" I already ordered the meat. No, for the drink. Oh. Not like to drink, not the meat. Blood. Food's coming. Don't worry. You could probably drink meat if you really wanted to. Ah, we don't serve that here. I'm trying. Okay, what I said earlier about hearing fish and chips and getting hungry. Never mind. That that feeling is gone because drinking meat, I just remembered, yeah, you can. You puree it and you basically make a smoothie. And there's people who do this because they think health benefits. And they always do it with raw meat. And there's never a health benefit. Oh, God, I actually got a little nauseous thinking about that. Well, I just, why? Right, that it's not the best. Mm, that's not really... Tried it, been there, done that. He, okay, is there like... Okay, he, he points mm, meat at... Meat smoothie just something listed on the chalkboard 
-hmm. like maybe there's a chalkboard that is like this is the drink things because there's drink drawings and he points Mm -hmm. at whatever is randomly up there and goes i want that (laughs) please be super fruity she just says oh Okay, tough guy. I'll get it for you. What is it? Hold it. 99. Oh. What so did... you picked something spicy from the board. He's definitely just like, I am a tough guy. Oh. <laughs> so snorts. Yeah. Oh, and he didn't realize uh, okay, it was a joke. About this They're about trip. to cast Fireball? Oh, yeah. Right on the taste buds. Special. And knowing you guys, you're going to make it a thing. So Yeah. Um, she starts mixing behind the bar there, and she's grabbing a bunch of different liquors. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Tired Duo, what's up? Once Upon a Witchlight is what everyone has been quoting in chat. Also, hi, this is my first of your lives, and I've been rewatching Fool's Gold episodes. Honestly, yeah, the Fool's Gold episode's completely amazing. I completely get it. Honestly, I should just do that before it ends because I want to rewatch everything again. Might actually do it as a stream or not. I'm not sure yet. And yeah, Tired Duo, thanks for dropping in. And it's one of the first lines. Once Upon a Witchlight. I think that's the D&D book. The one with the... <laughs> Deck of Many Things is the canonic holder of it. I'm not entirely sure if I have that right or not. Hmm. At one point, you swear that you see a flame, but she turns around and what she gives to you is a hollowed out cactus spike what? still attached with a straw. <laughs> um, and it's filled with like a like foamy kind Sriracha of juice? bubbling liquor that you've mm-hmm. never seen or tasted before. <laughs> and it is crowned by a green flame actively burning this here you go i mean technically there are drinks that they actually lit on fire before you sip it but usually it burns out immediately for effect because it would melt a straw or your face but god damn the one, big guy stuff. one resurrection thank you he chose a resurrection it's, for tough people it's so it. spicy yeah. it brings you back to uh, life you, huh? it. Uh, you take one point of damage from the cactus um ow does he blow out the flame? <laughs> he didn't say he does, so he's drinking it down. <laughs> it's on he's fire! Like, it to me this way, this is how you drink it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you drink it. It is on fire. extraordinarily spicy liquor, but the thing is, it's like, it's such a harsh punch that hits you that your soul actually leaves your body for a second. What? And you are above, and you can see yourself sitting at the tavern. You can see Amelia being just kind of like, mm, and Rooster just being like excited. As you briefly die, and then <laughs> you go swoop back into your body, and you just feel like completely like rejuvenated. Any back pains or aches you may have had are all gone. What? And now you just have like a little adrenaline rush that wears off. <laughs> I need to remember this. I hope this is in the Bellowing Wilds book. Just this kind of drink, because this is the kind of fantasy drink I want to get more of whenever there's a bar scene in any D&D setting. I need to send a clip of this to my DM. Any of them. Oh my God. You literally have a drink so powerful. It kills you and brings you back to life with the sheer spiciness of it. It's a one-two punch. Honestly, bringing this around mid-fight as a refresher is probably a good option. Either to distract the boss by killing them and re- reviving them. Sure, with the full health. But you get to wail on their dead body. Or just to bring yourself back. I don't even... Cactus resurrection grenades, man. <laughs> I love everything about this. I, I love this. I love the description. I love the implementation. Felix for best DM, man. <laughs> While it's an extremely harsh drink, it is tasty. Yeah. It tastes very sweet. Oh, sweet and spicy. Those are really body, good. He does that thing where like you shudder and you just go like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you see your? <laughs> did you see your parents? Or no. Your grandmama? No. Oh, people always say that they see their parents or their grandmama whenever they drink that drink. I don't know why, but. You didn't see anything? I just saw her and he points at Amelia. Oh, oh my. Oh. <laughs> she blushes a little. Oh! He doesn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Rooster doesn't either, and he's like, yeah! Oh my god! Yeah. They're both oblivious Shortly in after, different ways. You hear a little ding as your food's ready, and ding, Rooster, food is you done. get your monster nuggies, which monster is like nuggies. ordered from the kids' menu, but whatever. He pours a bunch of hot sauce on it. Yeah, you know, you're not making a good case for not being a kid. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> core, is, core and, is just like item two on the pamphlet. Kids, order, kids will order kitty. Yeah. Like. Meanwhile, core ordered like the brisket, mm-hmm. but it's not like a slice of brisket. It is like a whole brisket. Good. Oh damn! It's a giant portion of meat. Excellent. It is what he deserves. With extra sauce yeah. on top and nothing else. There's no sides. Yeah. Uh, goes without saying. 
both of these are delicious. Yes. Yeah, Do f- I get back the HP that I lost? <laughs> I have a one hit point. <laughs> no. Damn it. Yeah. Aww. So you guys enjoy your food. There's certainly a few uh, murmurs going around the tavern around you as well, because there's like about, I'll say, two dozen other guests in here. How and many? Four certainly new. And you as well, because there's like about, I'll say, two dozen other guests in here. Well, oh, two dozen. For some reason, I thought he said 2,000 other guests. Like, dear God, that's a huge place. Two dozen, like 24 people in a small tavern. It, I guess it's not that small. Not too bad, though. Core is certainly new. Yeah, and it doesn't Rooster take... Rooster is old. <laughs> Rooster is we old. We all know yeah. him. Yeah, and it doesn't take too long before a guy comes over to you, Core. This guy is a goblin. Oh. Uh, he's about three and a half feet tall. Previously, you heard him and, like, four other goblin buddies kind of, like, hush talking and they were like pushing him so oh no what's he gonna like, do hey buddy hey and he like tucks tucks on your like cape mm-hmm. so what are you supposed to be demon I'm core he's car <laughs> yeah but you are you a demon or are you a cow i am cor- what are you? a cow a oh my god a grand and terrifying baffos demon little demon cow Cool. No, just a baffle. <laughs> oh, I Demon am sheep. a... Maybe the alcohol is starting to get him a little bit. He's taking a couple more hits. Do a constitution save. Oh, sorry, a fortitude. Fortitude. Oh. Fortitude. Was well, constitution 5th oh. edition then? 22. Is oh, that good? Okay. He's, yeah. got, he's, a little, he's just got a bit of a buzz. Yeah, you still, you still got good. that adrenaline rush mixed yeah, with the yeah, liquor. Yeah. I mean, he did die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a small he, case he of get, dead. He got better. in the soul a couple times. Yeah. Uh, Technically, that means they had a partial party wipe on episode one, session one. Oh, my God. He says, I am a grand Baphos demon, servant of Aberith, conqueror of the abyss. Whoa, okay there. Um, That's that's scary. Um, yeah. Yes, I'm very terrifying. Want to <laughs> fight? <gasps> what? He looks at the little guy and he's like, no, I do not fight children. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and when you say that... Um, it's strictly forbidden. It's one of Abra's iron rules. I ain't no kid. Look at my face. I got wrinkles. Pamphlet. <laughs> what pamphlet? <laughs> he just brings out the pamphlet. Thing. Well, you can't read it. It's an abyssal. But it says, children, rule number one, they will deny that they are children. Are you bringing out this pamphlet? Yeah. <laughs> Please bring out the pamphlet. If you try it. Sure. Okay, I I guess How tall is he that he can actually reach it? up to where Cor is. Yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> He's no. trying to snatch and clearly fails at it. No, no. Yeah. Not, not yours. Look, I'm not a kid. Why don't we just fight? Like, I prove it to you. I'm, I'm way tougher than you. What? Oh, no, my you God. Do that. What? Short man syndrome. Well, I want to fight him, too. Bruce, do you stay out of this? What? You, like, I am also not fighting before. you. You are also a child. <laughs> I am not a child. Yes, children right, are nuggies. tiny, and they pick fights, and they always deny that they're children. And um, Monster nuggies? I mean, he gestures towards the monster nuggies. <laughs> yes! Yeah, seems to be a child. <laughs> they're really good. As well. Yeah, you they should try are. one. Core does a 19 and I want nuggies. Hit. Yeah, it does. Okay, perfect. Uh, you take one point of damage as... My stomach is nauseous, but also really hungry right now because they keep mentioning all this good food, but then they talk about all the things that are making me nauseous. Then they're talking about the good things again. I'm like, what is with this stream? I am going from one extreme to the other of this is horrible. I love this. This is horrible. I love this. It's not letting me sit. I mean, dear God, my stomach is like, <laughs> you're starving and you want to never eat again in your life. Figure out which one. As soon as you do, you're going to be wrong. Oh my God, man. The what is today? Is bitten into your calf. Ow! <laughs> hey, he's gonna, fight me, big guy. He's gonna grab him by the <laughs> scruff and try, try to pull him off like a cat. Put him in timeout. <laughs> Not one. Oh. What the fuck? So, uh, the goblin got a bigger bite. Like he tries to grab grab him, and the the, the goblin just like scampers around. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could I? Okay, if you do a nat one and you go to grab the goblin, can can Rooster like jump on his back? <laughs> <laughs> I want to do it too. <laughs> oh my back. God, back. Rooster! Back. Core's back. Core's okay. Back. Like, I want to fight too. Because he wants to bite him, right? To Core's back. Yeah. Yeah. You'd like tip Core wow. a little bit off of his stool. Like he's just like, what? What's going on? No. <laughs> Come on, fight me, big guy. Come on. Fight, I'll fight show me. you. I will not fight you. Fighting children is forbidden. What? Once again, not a kid. And also, stay out of this, Harold. Shut up, Rooster. Harold you can always is fight the, the biggest guys coming in here. Let me have this. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do do that. <laughs> Come on, let me have this. Get out of here. What? They're fighting Get over who gets to fight here. the tallest guy. <laughs> oh my on god. His back. 
Uh, I mean, you yeah, Shadow Reaper, I'm watching D&D. Yeah, 3.5 yeah, from with. Dingo Doodles. He's going to try and grab you with one arm and the Herald with the other arm. Okay? Not Herald, the goblin. Grab the rooster. Okay, that one is an 18 to grab you. <laughs> yeah, I only rolled a 16. Okay, so got oh. him. And then I'm going for Herald with the other arm. That is a 19. Oh, um, okay, yeah, you do. What did you get? Okay, oh. so I've got the both of them by like cat, like cats by yeah. the scruff of the neck. <laughs> yeah. and they're probably and just hissing. I think Root Cor will just smack the two of them together, just <laughs> and then he'll just like hook them. <laughs> we just gentle toss into the bar, like get out of here. Um, yeah, Bad you, kids. You toss them both of them. Um, toss so the baby. You toss them at the bar. No, like back into the bar. Back like into the like bar. you know to the. The bar is the restaurant, the, the bar is in the actual bar yeah, within yeah, the restaurant. Sure. You you toss them back there. Yeah. Can I do a tumble? Absolutely, you can do a tumble. The goblin's doing one too. <laughs> you both avoid damage as you tumble back and you, you get back on your feet. Do we break anything though? No, you don't. I okay. will for that. I'm assuming they've so, done this before. Like, I mean, Amelia was already like, oh a bit, my god, like ready in case you broke something, but you didn't, so you're all good. But Amelia at this point pipes up and is just like, like whoa, 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 can we like not do this again, please? We're How many times have they done, done this? Oh God, Amelia sounds uh, so uh, entirely uh, done well, with it. Okay, but Harold, you too. Can, you, can you please not do that? Fine. And the Harold has the same reaction because it's like it's Amelia. He's not gonna piss her off. So yeah. Oh, wonder why not. Fine. Oh, yeah. She but supplies the booze next time, guys. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna fight you. No. Two v one. Guys, Harold. Yeah. Leave me alone to my meat platter. <laughs> <laughs> I can always fight you. Harold? Yes, you fight each other. Children we, fighting each other. We is fight fine. like all the time. So you're just kind of boring. Just, <laughs> just punches him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if I break that, <laughs> Cor just goes back to his food and he's like, fucking kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you two are fighting. You know, give me just like 1d20. We're going to see how this works out. Okay, that's an eight. In, oh, you got a seven. Oh, oh my god, god, he somehow managed so to lose. Somehow Rooster's coming out on top. Rooster's slightly it's, coming it's out on top. It's a pathetic fight, but you oh still win. It's literally just a it's slap like fight, a, isn't you're it? You're doing that like, yeah, that fight. slap fight. Called it! <laughs> I called it! Yeah. Kor has probably never been more convinced that these are indeed children. Yo, yeah, yeah. He's, you're not making a case for you. Damn it. <laughs> I want the big revelation, no matter how old Rooster turns out to be, that he is actually a half genie child, because that is the only thing that makes us better, because he needs to make sure it's like, I'm not a kid, followed by, oh, shit, I am a kid. That just makes it perfect if that happens. <laughs> and oh. Amelia eventually comes over and does like the same thing Cor does. Let me just see. Picks I up mean, the two Rooster, hissing cat, I mean, children. To avoid her grapple, beat a 15. Ooh. I do not. Okay, she picks both of you up yeah. and it's like, okay, okay, that's enough. <laughs> and she puts Harold over with his goblin buddies and she puts Rooster back in its seat beside Cor. <laughs> put him back in his high chair. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh, my God. Puts you back in your high chair at the bar and it's just, okay, that's like, seriously. Just one little short king special. On one of those coloring maps on the back of the menu. Uh, <laughs> hey, don't knock the coloring ma maps and crayons. They're fun. I've already filled in all of them. A rooster's just like, I'm a master of the menu maze. Yeah. Thank you very much. I've, I've already Champion. done it. Yeah. And Baby. he like, starts it and then he's like, no, no. All right, go back. <laughs> Baby <laughs> sips, go. Oh, okay. Yeah, V, hold same on, energy. And, and he just like starts from one end and just dr draws directly to the other side. <laughs> They didn't okay. tell you you can do that. I did that. <laughs> yeah. Technically, uh, it did as you succeed. you guys are enjoying your meals and drinks and all that good stuff, eventually a squad comes in oh. of about three somewhat heavily armored people. They Ooh. appear to be guards. But uh, Rooster, these like Teak doesn't have these kinds of guards. Like the guards oh. here, they tend to wear like kind of like leather armor. You know, so they're like, from somewhere made else. For the desert. Yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> they look hot. Yeah. These guys. <laughs> So not only are they guards from out of town, they're guards from a place that doesn't have deserts because they're not equipped to it. Ooh, I'm getting plot vibes. Look pretty hot. And they are sweating as they come in. Oh, and, and they're and physically hot. Way. Yeah, exactly. And they also bear a sigil Boris is here? that you've never really seen before. Ooh. It looks like a swirling star. Oh, yeah. do I recognize they that? They come up to the bar and they sit beside. Like they don't sit right beside you guys. They sit at like another end of the bar. That's fine. Um, they're sweating. They also getting a resurrection over and uh, like serves them some drinks and stuff like they that. They look big and kind of intimidating, right? They look competent. They look like trained warriors. Oh, yeah. but they're not coming in here like. 
you know, oh, we are the bad guys kind of vibe. Like, they just look like kind There's of... Strider in the back of the building, retired. maybe? They're off-duty guards. They didn't hmm. know their stuff. They're still armed. Well, when one door closes, another one opens. Oh, my God, he Rooster. Stool. <laughs> <laughs> he walks towards these guys. All right, you approach the three guys. They're like halfway through their first pint right now. Hey. Just hey. drunk enough to maybe agree to it? Hey. I'm like, God every time I'm trying to get ready to say something, I'm just like caught off guard by it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. This is your ultimate gremlin mode. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Truly, we've seen Turn Dingo's true key. personality say, full and utter gremlin. It's not her character style. It's just her. He's around, uh, appears to be, like, he has a couple extra like badges, so he seems to be like oh, the leader. He's the in charge yeah. guy. And it's like, uh, what is it, citizen? Uh, can I fight you? What? No. Yeah. I I do not no, wish to fight. No, it's a yes. Yes. Fight, fight the children? Yeah. Don't fight, fight the children? No. Why not? You. Well, why should you I fight strong. you? strong. Say, child, I, Felix, yes, give in. Yes, I am powerful, but I do not seek a fight at the moment. I, I seek a fight. You're like a guard guy, right? And the whole point is to, like, benefit citizens and the city and stuff. Your benefit to me, a citizen would be for you to fight me oh my we, god he goes trying so hard it's he like at this point he like, the lack of logic is its own lack of logic which is logic somehow <laughs> it's just like it's you have like, to hit yourself right. a few times for to get my, it for my beer no less okay yeah, exactly sure. i think as you are is as core has looked looked over his shoulder and is seeing you're like approaching the guards antagonizing them like a tiny dog yeah <laughs> and i think core like looks like slowly like turns back over to amelia and he's just like does he do this all the time everywhere? probably all the time literally oh, yeah. uh, all the time Mm. Oh my god. He's, he's good at making friends in his own way. <laughs> oh, jeez. This guy's is making friends? Yeah. How did he have people face. rooting for him? He's good at making trouble is what he is. Yeah. I, I do not know how to phrase this any better <laughs> that I do not wish to fight you. We nope. have no quarrel with one another. Um, I'll grant you a wish. What? When you say that, his face goes through a variety of emotions. <laughs> okay. It goes through half gin or half genie so apparently he just has access to wishes probably not the way they're thinking though through confusion a, a bit of rage you see in there and then just like humor i was just like okay but like sure um i'm a genie at that point he bursts out laughing like, it's this kind of laugh of just, like, he does not believe you. It's, I mean... It's, like, a hearty fucking... I'm, I'm kind of with the guy on this one. I would not believe it expense. either. Even the other dudes are, like, snickering and laughing at this point. We should kind of pouts a bit. It's like, yeah, you, I am. You are no genie kid. I am a genie. You are a child wearing what? a costume. Stop saying child! I'm not... <laughs> it's the second person to do the child. I'm glad he finally did it. Also, considering what I know of at least the D&D &D side of... I mean, they're doing 3.5. I'm not sure if it changed a lot there because I don't remember. I wasn't playing then. Did they have all the lore about what exactly the skin tone meant? Red would be the fire genasi who are just evil slavers. I'm not sure they're doing that because they also have the abyss is conquered by someone who doesn't like to harm or specifically to fight kids. So it's probably not the same lore I'm used to. Not a child. <laughs> Coraline's over to Please Amelia. be an actual like, genie child. Please genie? be an actual genie child. Amelia says to you, Oh, you never heard of genies? Uh, I'm new here. Accurate. Genies. Or in general, probably. I guess I don't really know what they are. I never asked. Uh, but they're like these powerful beings that can like grant wishes and stuff. So they often have like a lamp. Some don't have a lamp. And then you like, I don't know, you talk to them and then you make a wish. And for some reason. Please tell me that the equivalent of the shackles that he has are the golden teeth, because that would just be hilarious to me. Like, some people have a lamp. Some people have the chains, like when you saw what they had. I'm going off a ladder on this one. Please let it be the teeth. Just let Rooster's teeth be his chains. Like, ah, I can use them. Neat. Because he would just love it. Oh, man. Entire deal. Just wait for the feels of episode two. It hits hard. Ooh. Reason they, like, owe you a wish so they fulfill it? There's, it's kind of like a myth in a way. Oh, but Rooster always says he is one, but I've never seen him grant a wish. I don't know. Can he do it this early? Level two is pretty young. Sense. 
But if you ever find a spooky lamp and someone's living inside it, maybe that's a genie. Tell me about it if that happens. Or just a gnome with sure. a big house. Uh, I probably won't be back here, but... Oh, that's a shame. You're growing on me. <laughs> is is Amelia um, flirting with Kor? Yeah, uh, Rooster, the guy is like he's okay. Amazing. He's just like catching his breath and it's like, okay, okay, buddy. Um, <clears throat> sorry, citizen. I am an all-powerful genie. That can... <laughs> no, stop. Yes, I'm going. No. Yes, and I have the ability to move. Uh, what did what did Boris say? Oh, he's, at, he's not even know what he's saying. He's getting off Boris, which also means that this is still Dingo in character, as opposed to breaking character to argue that she's doing the plot line where Felix is very much just going, what are you doing? Time and space. Ooh. And uh -huh. if you don't fight me, uh, I'll get another person to fight me and get a wish instead. Why don't you go ahead and grant me a wish, then? Well, you have to fight me first. Wish first. Um, wrestle. Fight first. Look, the point of getting at is you are no genie and you cannot cast wishes or anything like that. Clearly. Look at you. You are Grand tiny wish. and pathetic. I am not tiny. This world is just weirdly proportioned. And I also <laughs> do not see any kind of lamp. I don't see the usual things that you see with a genie. Like, you are no genie. You're a kid in a costume. I am, first of all, not a kid. Second of all, I don't know what a costume Please be a genie kid. Please be a genie clothes. kid. This is like it, it, fabric. It, that looks like a, a costume of what you hear what genies wear in fairy tales. Like you've I read a, a, you, <laughs> I do uh, not know how to get this into your head that I do not wish to fight you and you are no genie. <laughs> what will it take for you to believe me? Right now, all I can imagine is that on the faces of Felix right now, he's just going, just, just Dingo, Dingo, why? Just, just why? And Dingo is just having a big smile on her face because she's just being an absolute little shithead. And she's aware that she's just turning everything Felix does back on him. And you can almost guarantee, just hearing this, biggest shit-eating grin possible. I can just imagine every bit of it. For you to yeah. fight me. But I am... I am... Unless you're he's too like, scared. He's like looking at the other guys like, please help me with this you're kid. Too nope. Scared, no, no, you guy, leave him to his own. guys could be like, hey boss, why don't you just beat him and like, and beat him and arm wrestling, boss? I, I was about to say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, a show of strength. One of them suggests arm wrestling and the main guy responds with, you know what? Fine. Fine. I, Archibald Von... Dingle Smurf. Smart Dingle Smurf. Smurf. You guys say. <laughs> Von Dingle <laughs> Smurf strikes Bingo. again. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Horty tord. Bing bong. Horty tord. Bing bong. <laughs> Let me bong. talk. Bing bong. Bing bong. The distinguished line of bing bongs. I, Archibald Vaughn. Say you I coward. You fucking guys. <laughs> Please. Archibald Vaughn bing bong. Vaughn bing bong. Pickle sports. Pickle sports. Pickle sports. Oh Archibald my god. Archibald Vaughn. Pickle sports. Damn it. <laughs> Uh, I kind of wish Bing Bong won. I'll get you next time. <laughs> Challenge you to an arm wrestling contest. Okay. Sure. Bring it on. And they clear a table nearby. Why do I think Rooster's going to win just because they're so and much puts heavier? His arm up and he's like, I still feel a little conflicted about fighting a child. I am not a child. Please be you a look child. very childish and you're eating nuggies. Is a child yeah. usually this ripped? <laughs> well. No. Okay, see? <laughs> I mean, there's pictures. There's like a kid named Child Hercules or something, and he was jacked. Apparently, it isn't always the best option, though, because that kind of development is not healthy that young. But, you know, it, it can happen. It shouldn't, but it can. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a weird fucking argument. It's, just, <laughs> it's, such a, it's such a kid thing to say. Like, I got abs. Yeah, look, I got abs, and yeah. I'm very well toned. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh so, my God. Yeah, um, I just want that sure. to be the case. Just let him actually be a genie yeah, child. It. Roll strength check. What did you get? I got a six. <laughs> I got a nat one. Ah! How? Okay, somehow you arm wrestle this guy down, and he looks, again, a multitude of emotions, mainly embarrassment, go across He his didn't face. have to win, though. He oh, just had well, to fight. I think what happened was that he was surprised by how fucking dense you are. Because you're <laughs> yeah, how hard it is. He's, he, he's, he's not like strong. He's pounds. just really yeah. dense. So he probably just, like, was 
expecting a wave and got you. actual right. competition. Yeah, Rooster is 300. Ten yeah, so he's probably Damn. Like, he was like, oh That's yeah, more he's gonna me. like, he's gonna probably like, pretend that he was going light, so he's like, pretend that you guys were just struggling. Oh, that's so like, oh okay. Like, mm. That's true. And also, Core would have noticed when he picked him up. Be like, that's, true. Yeah. that's true. That's no, true. You've noticed how heavy he is. Oh yeah, because you would have thought he's way really lighter. Dense. But now, no, he's I don't know the other half is. The other two guards are now laughing at their leader's expense. They're just like, oh my god. Give him the wish. Fully turned around on his on his stool. Drinking, just like watching. Yeah. <laughs> and Wish him to go away, and then he does. <clears throat> Rematch. <laughs> All right. Go for it. A Sixteen. He got a twelve. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now he actually so tries, and you still. That's three out of five. Like... Now he's actually like upset. You just beat him again. He leans back, and it's just like, <laughs> do it again. From. At the desert. Okay. We're all in the desert. Where are you from? I don't know. Somewhere in the desert. What do you mean you don't know? Well, I don't... I mean... I just... You don't want to tell me? No, I'll tell you. Tell me. Where are you from? Well, I it's like arguing with a child. It, but essentially, I just popped up into the desert and then just walked here. And that was it. I don't know. Do me a favor. Eh. He casts Zone of Truth on an area beside you guys. Oh. Okay. Is Core also in there? You can choose to step into it, but no, currently nobody's affected by the Zone of Truth. Okay. Like, you can see there's a sigil on the so ground. So, he does... <laughs> yeah. What I has access to that? A paladin ability, maybe? Step in that. And tell me, you can cast Wishes. Okay. He does. I can cast Wishes. Yeah, and you say it, and the Zone of Truth doesn't alert to it. When you say that... Dude changes his attitude real quick compared to you. Um, <laughs> I tell it. Yeah, but is it a full wish? Is it a limited wish? Or is it just because he tries really hard to do his best? I don't know yet. And frankly, it'd be funny if all of them were true. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, ha Yeah. Yeah, and then he like, like just before, like, you know, I feel bad for beating you. Here, have some gold. Buy yourself something good. Uh, when you change... Extend your arm yeah. to grab him. He grabs, grabs him. your wrist ah. very forcefully. They were looking for a genie, weren't I they? A, I have a bracer. I know. And I'm not saying he's hurting you, but he's gripping the shit out of you right now. And he says, gentlemen, we have another one. And another one? Another what? I don't know what you are. I'm a genie, I told you. I'm yeah. Rooster. Actually, I'm Rooster, too. So. That, nice to meet you. Well, Rooster, whatever you are. You're coming with us. Why does this feel like a end drop? Did they just end the video? Oh god damn it! They're ending it there. Ah, oh, you son of a bitch! Ah, bit my tongue in the back. Ow, that actually hurt. Ow, fuck! I got so mad, I injured myself. Hey, Why? You like this episode of Fool's Gold Sands? Yeah, that's like great. Thanks, Fredrick. Like all the comics and character art and everything we're posting, you can go to foolsgold.fun slash sands Ow. to check it out there. If you'd like to support us, there's also a tip jar on the website. Seriously, if you can do that, I need to go probably bandage my tongue because I actually bit myself pretty hard in the back. Ow. That, that legitimately hurts right now. Yow. Okay, so yeah, that was insane. And I legitimately got like an adrenaline rush, like, ooh, things are happening, and it's over. Yeah, of course, that's when it ends. Partially, I'm, if you notice, I was yawning, it's because I decided to get the decaf coffee. This is on me. This is on me. I might have stayed up too late doing some uh, geekery. Yeah, I do a lot of 40k stuff. I'm trying a new art scheme and new painting styles. And uh, yeah, you're probably not supposed to do that until like 3 in the morning. And that hit me. Hard. Yeah. Wait, Michael, if the community notes have NPC art? Ooh, I am definitely... Or Michaela. Michaelia? Leaf? I'm just going to say Leaf. Sorry about the name. I fuck up names. I do that. But yeah, Leaf. I'm definitely checking that out. That'll be so freaking cool. And there's an episode two already out. Oh, you're right, Tire Duo. I think I saw that before I came out, but I kind of forgot because I saw it when it was really late. I wasn't sure I actually saw that or was hallucinating because it was three in the morning. I wasn't sure what color I was painting. And hell, I didn't even realize I was using purple on those models until right now. I thought it was a red. I also wasn't sure I dreamed it was red or I knew it was purple or not. Again, I was really tired. Note to self, don't paint while tired. Whatever. More importantly, 
I need to go get caffeine and maybe some chicken nuggies because, uh, yeah, my stomach is growling really hard. I'm actually surprised no one had commented on the video because it sounded, at least to me, like it was super loud. Damn it. I didn't want nuggets. I, now I just need the nugs. Damn it. Also, maybe to banish my tongue because I can actually taste blood. I bit myself really hard. Ow. It, it's actually painful. More importantly, you guys know the others. Link below to the original video. Dingo did an amazing job. Felix is pulling out a really fun character class right now. The design, the changes, having some always in character moments, which I actually am a little surprised about because I've never seen a D&D &D game where that actually manages to do that all the way through because we break character all the time whenever I played, but also because we just ask questions like, hey, are we allowed to get away with this? The answer is usually roll. And then we just kept getting really good rolls. So we did. And it was stupid. And I loved it. But more importantly, for everyone who was here watching me vicariously get to experience TNT again, even though I can't seem to ever get a freaking game together anymore. Yeah, scheduling the ultimate boss. Thank you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios. <laughs> uh, it was fun.